welcome to the Wilderness Podcast. We're on episode 88. I am your host, Dills, and with me every single week is the Deegan. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty good. How's it going with you? Actually, let me cut you off there because a few things we need to let you know what we're going to be talking about this week. So the big one, brand new Ray got released on Thursday. That's been all the rage this week. I, almost everything else that we're going to talk about is about the raids. We've also got some updates on the RuneScape 3 Solak bug abuse. We talked about it last week when we were talking about, or you brought up the completionist cape and stuff like that on how it works in RuneScape 3 and whether or not it would work in old school RuneScape. Anyways, before all that, let's hear what you did this week. So I broke my keyboard and my chair. Wow, geez, a little bit of a... Some rage quitting going on? Yeah, I didn't get my chicken tendies in time, so I kind of got mad. Mmm, that'll do it. Lost all my good boy points on that one. Shit. Um, okay, actually, though, so it kind of ties into what I did in RS. So pretty much a bunch of raids and Zalra. And I guess a little bit of theater mm. blood, but we'll talk about that later. So I made a bunch of money from raids. I got, I, I don't even know how many splits I got. I got, like, three decks splits an ancestral bottom split arcane split all four ways um you're there for the uh two of the deck scrolls i think yeah i was gonna say you and i were doing some raiding early on in the week and we got back to back deck scrolls so it was the first time i saw unique in the raid yeah and on top of that we saw two in a row which was fantastic i was really hurting on some cash yep really needed that but uh, I did a lot of, like, Slayer and stuff. Should probably update you guys on that, because, like, I have been playing a lot this week, trying... My my goal is to be fully prepared for Theater of Blood, or for what I thought would be fully prepared. As prepared as you could be for this update that was coming up this week. Yeah, with all the raid splits and the Zara and the other, like, random bossing I did... And Slayer, I'm at 97 Slayer and 98 Magic. Uh, I got 800, a well, little bit under 900k Magic experience and 1 mil Slayer experience to go until I get levels in each of those. Almost max Magic. Bit of way to go for Slayer. Anyways, so this is where it loops into my keyboard breaking. I decided to dump a bunch of my money into getting 99 Prayer. That was my goal. I had a decent amount of cash and... I was doing Insult Heads for a while. I think I told people about that. Yep. But I, like, did the math, and I'll get 99 Magic way before I get 99 Slayer. So doing Insult Heads would net me 1.3 mil Magic experience while getting 99 Prayer. And it's, like, it's really tedious. It's pretty fucking tedious if I'm being... I mean, I guess Prayer Training in general is tedious, but... Yeah, it depends. Now, how AFK is it? Uh, that's a huge factor when you're training skills in this game, especially long term up to 99. It depends how you train prayer. If you like to just use a bone on an altar and then go take a dump or something, just like walk away from the computer, uh, it's a lot more or a lot less AFK because it's like you got to bank a lot. And, well, I guess you have to bank a, or with prayer, but that is, you know what I mean? Like you got to like get your unsold heads and you have to like use the fairy rings and you have to drop them and you got to be quick to. To revive the, uh, or reanimate the heads, or else, you know, people can see them and they'll jack your heads. Oh, yeah? Well, they can. It's, it's what? Like, you gotta, you gotta click, like, a, you know, a couple times every 10 seconds. It's also dependent on okay. your combat level and if you're cannoning and whatnot. That does play a factor of, like, how AFK it is. True. But, like, when I, but when I was doing bones, cause I decided, you know, I don't wanna do insult heads, cause, Kind of like a, a waste of magic experience, and I can get better rates if I just do prayer itself. If I like one tick the bones, which is like you just you can like in Runelight, you can go to the menu configuration thing and you can set it so you can left click your bones on use instead of burying, and you just go to an altar That's and so you just easy. you just spam the bones onto the altar, and it like it's like way faster than just kind of AFKing it. Yeah, it it's, like what doubles the speed. Yeah. Yeah, it's much faster. So I was like, all right, I'll just head to the Chaos Altar and I'll just do that. And I think I said in the past, the main one of the main reasons why I was doing Insult Head is because I don't want to get PK'd. Even if I'm doing the suicide method, it's just annoying having a world hop and like blah, 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 blah. So what I would do is use the Chaos Altar, 
And because I, I get up like pretty early, I get up at like six in the morning. I've been getting up like pretty, I've been on a, on a tight sleep schedule. Um, uh, gotta get those good boy points. Yeah, it's not bad. I had, I had my week off and honestly, I've been getting up early every single day to play some RuneScape and it's, I, I love it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I love being up when, before the sun's up and just gaming. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's nice. Well, I know what it is for me at least. I don't get PK'd when I'm doing Chaos Alter. Like I'll do it for like, a, I would do it a couple hours and then, then all of a sudden I'm just people are attacking me nonstop, which is kind of fun because it's a game of like how many redemptions can I get off and how long can I pray flick them, like change my prayers on them and get all my bones. And it's it's really nice if you can dump a whole inventory on an altar and uh, and live. They they get pretty fucking mad. Do you find that the PKers there are kind of not very skilled? They're so fucking bad. Dude, they're so bad. I've like I I've died to them, and I'm just like. I should just gear up and just wait there for someone. Like, I've had dudes yeah. jump in with, like, full black D high and just MS, like, magic shortbow shoot me and spec me. Or it's just like, what, what is this guy doing? I'm just, all right, that's fine. Oh, I'm, I'm getting kind of low. I'll just use redemption. Okay, I'm, I'm back up. Let me tag the altar and get my prayer back. And that's why I would want to get an AGS. You just sit there, you wait for them to attack you, and then you just turn around, boom. You might be able to get a kill. I remember when I was doing the Chaos Altar, I would get PK'd a handful of times, but I got got away almost every single time, and I was always, like, shocked, like, how, I have nothing, how are they not killing me? And then I realized, this is the place where I would go if I wanted to start PK'ing more often. Yeah, I mean... It's a good place to start learning. I guess. I, I, I've been doing the suicide method, and I'm not gonna bring noted bones and shit. So, mm-hmm. what that is, is I use a burning amulet and a full inventory of bones, teleport to the lava maze, run to the altar, spam all my bones. Once I'm out, I just go up to the uh, Chaos Fanatic. It's a little northeast. It's next to the KVD mm-hmm. layer. And then he just, like, three shots me or whatever. He kills me quickly, and then I just spawn at Edgeville, because I, I bought the respawn there a while ago. Nice. And I just gear up and do it all over again. Anyways, um, eventually, during my Chaos Altar prayer training, I guess... All of a sudden, like, the buttons B, N, and dash just start getting spammed in my chat, and my screen starts hmm. spinning super quickly. No this boy. is looping to my keyboard breaking. <laughs> looping, nice. I didn't know what was going on. I've had this keyboard for, like, a pretty long time, and it was, like, like I said, it was early in the morning, so I'm, like, literally, like, listening to music, and I'm just, like, sipping my coffee. I'm just, like, leaning back in my chair, and I'm, like, oh, what the fuck? Like, it happens actually out of nowhere, and I, like... Did like three hours of taking apart my keyboard, trying to see if like they spill anything on it. No, I didn't spill anything. Is there like a crack in the circuit board? Like what is going on? There's no magnets around my computer. I like tried it. So no chicken tendy breading fell into your keyboard. No, no, not not this time. So I like plug it into my laptop. I'm like, okay, it's still going on. It was super weird. Like, I would hit the B button and would turn off my computer. Like, all my keys got remapped to random shit. That sounds like the worst That like the worst thing that could happen to your keyboard. It's just one of the buttons you press and your whole computer just shuts down. You're like, what the... F- is it updating? I thought it was my computer because it would just turn off. But, like, because what I would do is unplug my keyboard. Like, this is obviously after I log off on RS. But I open up Notepad and I just, like... Like, I just, like, you know, one, like, or tilde to equals, Q to, like, close bracket. Like, I just, like, swipe my fingers down the board trying to see which keys are fucked. And just open mm-hmm. up a notepad and see which ones go through. And then as I, like, get to B, my computer just instantly shuts off. I'm like, what? And you're like, wow, that's unlucky. I got to do this all over again. Yeah. And so then I would, like, I just, like, go ahead B and then boom, everything would go to shit. It was super weird. Like, my... My my keyboard had, like, a function button, and I could, like, link that to my F12, and after I, like, held function, hit F12, I could change the lighting, si- like, system and the intensities and which keys are lit by using all my F keys. Like, that played a part in this whole fucking fiasco, where, like, I would be, like, hitting, like, five, and it would be just, like, turning all my, my colors on as bright as possible and lighting up every single key. It was super annoying. Hmm. Weird. Yeah, after like three hours, I just went downtown and then bought a keyboard, which which sucks. I hate this keyboard. Whatever, though. It is. It's whatever. So I spent like the whole day doing that. It was like honestly like a 
easily a six hour fiasco of like, cause I have to like travel an hour downtown and then mm. sifting through all the shitty $200 razor keyboards to find the right one for me and all this stuff. My whole day was like gone trying to get a keyboard. So I'm like, all right, not get, I can't, and I like did the math and I couldn't get 99 prayer before theater of blood. Mm-hmm. The next day I just stopped at 92 and I was like, all right, I'm going to just do some Slayer and some raids and did all that. At some point, my chair broke and <laughs> keep in mind, I'm under, I'm, I'm like six foot. I'm under 200 pounds. I'm like between like 180 and 200. I don't really know exactly, but so I'm not, I'm not like a big boy, right? Mm-hmm. The, the chair I had like, it had like a thing where you could like tilt the back and all that stuff, you know? change the direction you could like lay all the way down and shit it's like one of those ergonomic chairs yeah 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 and i was like playing rs i think i was streaming at the time i don't actually remember and i heard a popping sound from my from my chair and i got this really bad habit where if like i'm getting really into what i'm doing i just like slowly lean forward and kind of like go into like my, my my monitor like i'm like leaning forward hard nose pressed against the screen yeah and like the back of my chair makes a popping sound and i'm like and i don't really think anything of it i'm like huh, that's weird and then I either died or something, and I went like, oh, fuck, and I, like, went to go lay back, but my the back of my chair was all the way down, so I, like, fucking fell back, I was, like, you know, almost ate shit, looked at my chair, and, like, some metal plate slipped, causing it to, like, strip the screw, and so I can't even, like, re-screw it back into my chair, and it's fucked, but I have this, I still have my old chair. <laughs> oh, that piece of shit. So, no more clicking, but you might hear some rattling. Yeah, no problem. I uh, We both have the same, well, I guess we both had the same computer chairs. Cause they were like uh, those typical gaming chairs that you will see streamers using or you'll see in competitive scene. But it's like a knockoff brand called Top Gamers. Oh, yeah, dude. Well, we are some top gamers, though. So, it's pretty, it's pretty oh, sorry, fitting. Top Gamer. Oh. You know, I guess... Defining me as the top gamer, which is kind of nice, but yeah, I have I have fallen <laughs> quite literally <laughs> fallen off the throne. But they're they're okay. They're better than what I used to have, but they're not as good as I thought they would be. They're not as good as they looked. Honestly, going back to this old chair, I miss the lumbar support. True. Yeah, that thing's kind of nice. I know when I've thrown it my back like the, for the seventh time, that thing is kind of nice. It, Feels good to apply pressure to the back a bit. Man, we probably sound so fat. My chair breaks. You throw your back out, like, picking up stuff. <laughs> people probably think we're just fucking some big boys. We're reserving, like, two seats each on a plane. That's why we're not going to RuneFest. It's <laughs> too much home, money. Yeah. We have to sit on opposite sides of the plane <laughs> to balance it out. Anyways, uh, I don't know if I, I... I don't know if we should talk about... Our, I guess we'll just talk about our experience with Theater of Blood when we, like, talk about the update itself. So, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but my overall goal, like, especially now where I'm really pushing for it, is to sell off my bank minus minus my Anguish, Pagasian, and Dragon Warhammer. I'm going to mm-hmm. sell every... And I guess my food. That, that's probably a good thing to keep. I'm going to sell everything in my bank, and I'm going to buy a Twisted Bow. All right. And so, I've been grinding hard for that. I'm so close, but so far. I'm like, I'm rounding upwards, but I think I'm like 300 mil off as of right now. Now, are you doing this to kind of give yourself a different way of playing the game? Like it'll kind of change your play style? Or are you doing it because it's one of the most efficient ways of building up money? I don't, I've never met anyone that has bought a Tebow and then rebuilt using one. I know a couple people that want to do that. Like someone I raid with. Like one of my buddies, he uh, he's has the exact same goal: sell off bank. He might be keeping more items than me, but you know, sell off the majority of his bank, buy a Tebow, and rebuild. I don't know if it's efficient, but it sounds kind of fun. It sounds like it'll be fun for a while, but then eventually, just like I just so sick of using just this one weapon and fighting these handful of bosses, right? Because I'm, I'm assuming you're kind of restricted on what you can kill with that. It sure can kill a lot, but there's probably some bosses you're not going to be able to do. Well, I cycled, I did a bunch of Slayer, and I stopped on a Cerberus task, so that there's one boss I can kill at least like 150 times or 130 times, whatever the length of that task is. Plus, I have a bunch of points saved up, 
So if I want to farm Cerberus, because you can you use Twisted Bone Cerberus. Okay. Balance, by the way. You can just I can just <laughs> cycle a bunch of tasks until I get another one. But my plan would be Zalra and Zillana until I get the Zillana pet. Then I would move over to uh, the Zamrock boss. True. You know that's the only boss I've never actually fought yet. Zamrock. Yeah. Yeah, he sucks. Don't fight him. I will when I get a greater demons task. Don't do it. It's not worth it. I'm getting to that point though. <laughs> Trust me, it's worse than like you know how like if you're soloing Bandos. You can, like, get three kills, one to three. With, like, Zamrock, it's the same thing, but you have to waste more. You have to bring, like, Sandfuse and shit. That boss hmm. sucks. I've gotten a couple boss tasks, and I, like, get three Krills, and I just hope to God I don't have to go kill a million impling, or imps so I can uh, do one kill and then re-gear. Because he can just mm-hmm. calm you up for 70s. <laughs> Anyways... I, I, there's probably a bunch of shit I'm I'm forgetting about. Oh, actually, last thing I've been doing some weird weird little flips, right? I'll talk about this now because it's kind of over. But are these the flips that you mentioned last week that you refused to tell us what they were? Yeah. Oh, are you gonna tell us? Yeah. No. Okay. I'm. I mean, I'm I'll probably regret it, but. Fuck it. So, <laughs> the first one wasn't actually my idea. Someone mentioned it to me, and I was like, huh, I'll keep my eye on it, which is the Aphrodite's Aids. It's the opal, the red, sorry, it's the red topaz ring that lets you do more damage to vampires, or lets any weapon do damage to vampires. Ah, interesting. Normally, you'd use it for treble tracking. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. A, that's its main use. At the time, the margins like probably aren't the same. I've been keeping track of it, and it haven't been the same for a while. But there was a couple days where I was buying them for three hundred, selling them for four k. Oh wow! Is it just because yeah. of the theater of blood and stuff coming up? I, so part of that, I think people speculated you might need it for theater of blood because no one really knew what to expect. Yeah, that people were just like, "Oh, I gotta do travel tracking for this thing," and they'll just like, "I'll buy five. I don't care about the price." But I was able to, like, buy and sell limits, like, GE limits a few times and make a couple mil. Like, I was making good money off of it for a little bit. Wow. Um, the only reason I'm talking about it now is because some some idiots just completely killed the margins on it. Oof. And they're not buying and selling that well anymore, so I stopped. And then I was just doing random things like bracelets of slaughter and random shit like that. And I was doing teleport tabs, too. And I was making some decent money, but more importantly, on... Wednesday night? The night before the raid? Yep, yep. Night before the update, Theater of Blood, I was gonna go to bed, I'm like, wait a minute, I should go sell off my raids one tab, I should just get rid of all my Zarek shit, because you never know if I need what I will need money for, because we don't know what we have to buy. There there are some items I'm missing. Anyways, so I went to go sell off my shit, and I realized I couldn't sell things for half the price. Mm, Probably a lot of people have the same ideas of you. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Everyone's selling off their raids tabs, and, like, you don't care. If you have 50 things to sell, or not 50, but if you have, like, 20 things to sell, you like, people are just, like, one, one price for everything, pretty much. They just want it out of their bank. They're not even really paying attention to how much they're making. They just want to get as much money as possible. Yep. So, I didn't sell, I kept most of it, but, fuck, I had it all written down. Anyways, I ended up buying a shit ton of dynamite for 300 GP, which they go, like, normally they go for, like, 600 plus, 600 to 670, if you look at the GE tracker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, 600. Um, They dip down to, like, 400 and shit, apparently, but I bought some at, like, 300 and, like, in the low 300s. Wow. Yeah, I bought, like, a couple thousand. I bought, like, six or 7,000 quorums for under 2K, and I sold them for, like almost 2100 or like two two thousand fifty. like i flipped a bunch of quorums i flipped a bunch i flipped like almost ten thousand mahogany planks i bought a bunch for like 1500 and sold them for 2k each hmm. so many random items like i like literally opened up the chamber of xerix like drop table and just put in a bunch of really low buy offers for everything and then went and put them up for like a little bit under what they'd normally go for and i made like I still have some things selling, but some of them I bought. There's other items I don't, I don't want to mention that I bought for pretty cheap, and I know it's going to take a little bit for it to recover, and they yep. will 100%. I also flipped things like Mithril Ore. made like a lot of money off that, but I made 
as of right now, a bit over 10 mil in a day from just doing those flips. Okay. Which is pretty nice. My other idea, which I I normally think of doing, but I never have the money, and it's something I've noticed, is when there's new PVM content, the BGS goes up in price and the Warhammer goes up in price. I feel like the mm-hmm. Banos God Sword goes up because it's like a budget Dragon Warhammer, and a lot of people that are like lower levels that just want to see if they can do it will buy one. Yeah, exactly. And, yep. And I am so pissed because I could have bought like three or four. I had like 40 or 50 mil just chilling. And I was planning on putting a couple buy offers for like 10.5 mil. And just yep. if they go through dope, I'll just try and sell them for like 13 mil. That didn't end up happening. I just bought like a bunch of like uh, raids one supplies. And then I stocked up on like food and shit and a bunch of random things and then went to bed. And the BGS like mm-hmm. peaked. People were selling them for 70 or whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. People were selling them for like 23 mil. That's yeah. where it, like, it peaked around 23. So I kind of literally doubled my money at the GE. Yeah. We'll probably go more into detail about <laughs> that. But like there are some cases where the BGS is kind of better than the Dragon Warhammer. Another yeah. example is it might not be better, but it's more accurate in a lot of cases. And like yeah. for Bandos. You're going to be hitting, for the Bandos boss, you're going to be hitting so much more often with the BGS than you will with the Dragon Warhammer. Yeah. But there's typical items that I've noticed in supply, like specific weird supplies I noticed that tend to go, they go down really, really low two weeks before the update where it's like, why are these, or is no one stocking up? And then boom, like sharks went down to like 600 GP each for a little bit. And then they hit over 800. And, like, yep. for Vorkath, I told you guys, I, like, flipped over 100,000 sharks and made a lot of money off that. I could have mm-hmm. made way more money this time around off sharks. Well, I know I bought some when they were down to 600 just because I was doing PVM stuff. And then yeah. I ran out. I went to go buy it, I think, after Theater of Blood just because I needed some more food. Went to go buy it, realized there were 800. And I was like, what? Yeah. And then I go check Manta Rays. And Manta Rays were, like barely more than the sharks yeah. right because usually sharks is the default like it's, it's people are it's, just used to using sharks as the food. yeah old habits die hard it's like i'm gonna go yeah, buy exactly. a bunch of sharks okay oh they're more than anglers i mean they're not but they're more than anglers fuck it that, that's never happened but it's just whatever it's an example but when when you see it you'll see, like this week you saw sharks get pretty close in price to the manta rays and manta rays are one harder to get and two they give you 22 hp over sharks giving you 20 pretty crazy um so i'm still doing a lot of flips and stuff i'm i've been i'm trying to do like everything i can except for my dailies to make money because i don't i can't be asked to do dailies yeah there's some that i i agree with you i tried to my nightmare zone boxes my herb boxes because i've afk'd a couple times or I've AFK'd it quite a bit when I'm trying to level up my skills, and now I got all these points accumulated, and I don't want them just sitting there. You know, may as well just start spending it until I realize, shit, I should have saved that for the, some of the rings that I need, need to get. Yeah. I have like 14, 13 or 14 mil points, yeah. but I want to imbue every single Slay Helmet, every recolor and yep. stuff. That's like 1.3 each. I've done that. I got one more Slayer Helmet to get. So... I'm kind of stingy with that, but I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just lazy. I should probably be doing like my miscellaneous and my battle stabs and shit, but yeah, can't be bothered. Anyways, that's enough about me. I think I might cut you off. I remember something because I've done that before. Anyways, what'd you do this week? No, that's just the way she goes. All right. So my week, um, well, I mentioned before that I had the week off, just booked off vacation. I had a few things I needed to do like real life stuff and then on top of that with theater of blood coming i was like it'd be kind of nice to kind of kick back play a bunch of runescape get kind of prepared for that and just have a little staycation i needed a break from work so that's been pretty nice but honestly i'm trying to think what i did i did a bunch of slayer i'm also at 97 slayer we're probably still like neck and neck with inexperience and i got like 97 magic just a bunch of random things noise yeah, I got I had some Vorkath, did some of that. I find Vorkath soul draining. I don't know what it is, but something about it just makes me like, I'll do a couple runs and then I'm just like, I find myself AFKing right outside of where the Vorkath layer is. And then, then I'm like reading Reddit or I'm on like YouTube or I'm just browsing random things. And I'm just doing nothing. 
and I don't really know what it is. Part of me thinks that like like comparing Vorkath with Zolra because they're kind of similar as in like GP per hour and they're soloable bosses or they're meant they they are solo only. Yeah, they're like money making bosses. Yeah, yeah, but they're both great money, but they're kind of different. With Zolra, I find you have to think more i guess you got to pay attention to where these poison spawns are going like this poison gas you got to find the opening whereas vorkath he's kind of got like a couple moves you need to watch out for you just you can you're basically afking the boss but you have to be paying attention because for some reason the second you look at your other monitor or your other window it's the it's the moment that vorkath is going to be shooting his fireball that's going to one shot you in order to avoid that damage you got to move two squares over yeah but it just seems like any time you wanted to like okay you know i've been kind of afking basically this fight he hasn't done anything let me quickly glance over at my other screen maybe i'm playing runescape on another account let me just get that other account going look over and you're getting hit for 99 damage and you're dead and i'm dead yeah yeah it's that's kind of brutal i don't know it just got me thinking about the way the drop tables are because they're both really good money per hour Vorkath has, like, every kill you're getting well over 100k worth of loot. On top of that, there's a handful of uniques that are worth quite a bit. Where at, well, there's one unique in particular that's not worth anything. That item's the Dragon Bow Necklace. It's actually 600k, which is a lot more than I kind of would expect to go for. But the, the uniques on the Vorkath drop table are so much more rare than they are on the Zolra drop table. They're like one in a thousand for Vorkath. Sure, you can get a drop that's worth like 70 mil, but that's like one in 5,000. Like something. Yeah, one unique is one in 1,000, and the other two are one in 5,000. Yeah, which is like the same drop rate as most pets are for bosses. So it's pretty crazy. Whereas Zolra, I'm pretty sure it's like a one in like 258. I'm going to look it up real quick. One in 512. And that's the two, the fangs, right? The fangs and the onyx. And the Onyx. There's four of them. And the Visage? For, so for Zalra, there are four uniques. There is the Tanzanite Fang, the Magic Fang, the Serpentine Visage, and the Onyx Bolt, or the Onyx Bolt, the Uncon Onyx. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. They're all 512. Okay. So uh, it's a lot more common than the, the Vorkath uniques. Yeah. And those items in itself will sell for like three mil and stuff like that each. So it's, they're nice to get, right? Yeah, plus there's the two mutagens, and there's a snakeling. Yeah, yeah, the mutagen's pretty cool. M- minus pet and jar, but there's the, the tanzanite and the magma mutagens, which are 1 in 6.5k. Right, yeah, okay. So that's pretty cool. So I think the difference in why Vorkath isn't as exciting as Zalra, you're there to farm the the more common drops, which Zalra is kind of similar in that sense, but the thing is, is like, I'm not expecting to get any unique. If I do, cool, whatever. That that would be exciting, but you're just not expecting it. Whereas Zolra, you're kind of like, there's a chance. There's a chance I could get one of the rare drops. Yeah, on average, is what one in one twenty four, one one hundred and one one in one twenty eight. Jesus, I can't speak. On average, I believe it's one in one twenty eight. You you'll get a unique, which is that's awesome. You know what I mean? That's really yeah. That can keep you going. Yeah. My experience so. with both of them, Vorkath, it's like you just sit there and every six hits, you're like, oh, here comes his, like, crab. Because he does six hits in between, like, those, the crab thingy or, like, the machine machine gun fireball stuff. Yeah. And you're like, oh, now I gotta just deal with this. Okay, cool. We're, we're good. And then Zara is like, okay, where am I in the rotation? I completely forgot. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Like, Zara's, like, way more, you kind of have to know where you are within the, um, rotation. Like, it's a lot of, a lot of muscle memory. But, keep in mind, I only started doing Zara, like, off task after I got max gear for it. Okay, yeah, fair enough. And I haven't touched Zara since I started doing them, like, months and months ago. I had, like, what, 15 kills or something? under my belt from like you know using void and shit when i was a lower level i didn't really farm them when i was low but now i'm doing it with with like max gear and the poh and the shortcut and stuff like that yeah for sure definitely you can kind of brute force your mistakes you know you you hit them like for 40s and shit with your trident and you make a mistake it's not that big of a deal 
as opposed to being like a lower level. You're like, oh shit, I can't kill him. I'm going to die. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Besides that, we touched on earlier how we did some raiding. I got the back to back drop with you and got the dexterous scrolls. That was exciting and fun. Raiding's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying that. I tried kind of, it's not like, I guess kind of a pug group, like a pickup group, which is like a term used in a lot of MMO games when you basically play with randoms. Yeah. One person was from the CC, whereas the other ones were from a Discord group called We Do Raids. Yep. And it went a lot better than I expected it to, because like we weren't on voice chat, except for uh, me and that other guy, but it went a lot more smooth than I kind of expected. I kind of got some shit for not knowing to run the head, which is a term you've heard Deegan say a bunch, so you get a little bit of shit for stuff like that if you're not, you know, top notch. If you when in doubt, shit. say, I'm Mage Hand. And just stand at the mage hand. So fucking easy. That's exactly what I did. Because, yeah. like, the difference is, whenever I'm in a group, I'm usually with your group. So, digging, you kind of have your own little raiding group. And they're all much better than me. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, and they're, like, and you're much better than me. So, you know what I mean? In the hierarchy of things, I'm just, like, low bottom. So, when I go there, I'm basically told to go do the things that nobody else wants to do. For the most part, are the things that are, like, just go stand over in that corner and do that. Just don't worry about anything don't else. Don't try to do anything that might mess us up. That that's yeah, that's exactly. the role I like to take. It's nice. But when you but when you fuck up, it feels pretty bad. You're like <laughs> you had one job, just move when you see the spikes under your feet. You're like, well, come on, I'm I'm typing to someone on Discord. <laughs> what <laughs> yeah, the fuck? Exactly. I'm trimming my toenails. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, when I'm doing it with the other players and stuff, they're just I'm like we get to like the resource gathering room and I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing because half the time I'm just doing what your group is telling me to do, which is always the same thing, which is just pick herbs. So I'm just doing that. And then people are just like, aren't you going to make any potions? And I'm like, I don't know. Do you guys want me to make potions? Tell me what the fuck to do because otherwise I'm just going to keep picking herbs until we have like 4,000 of them. Yeah. Way more than what we need. Typically, just how many revits like revitalizes, just ask how many people take and if they go... Well, obviously four. Be like, well, in my last group, this guy took eight. You just like throw a random number out. Just like, oh, I got you got him trying to be consistent here. See, th this, yeah. this is the thing. You messed up by getting a higher level uh, farming. See, my trick is to have a low level farming. So people don't want me to help pick herbs. And then I can make the potions and get extra points. That's that's the key. Just Ooh, you get extra points for making potions. Yeah. If, like if you get like overload drops and people like use them to sip them, mm -hmm. you get the points for that. But so you messed up by having high, higher uh, farming. So now it's like, oh, Dills is the highest farming? Well, he's going to go pick the herbs. You, you better know how many gold pars and noxifers and boochus we need. Super easy. I just keep picking until like I notice nobody else is in the room and they're all waiting outside of the boss. True. So that's normally how I do it. Seemed to work out. Anyways, that was pretty... That worked out pretty well. So that's, if you're looking... I don't know if I would say if you're looking to get into raids, go there. It's... I've been I've been told that it's good to learn raids with randoms. It's the best way of doing it. But honestly, like I don't so I don't have too much experience with them. I only did a few of them. If you ask my friends, they'll always say I have the worst luck with this type of stuff. But my experience with we do raids has been super weird. But everything I, everything I've heard about it is like it's a really good experience. In my instance, I just I'm unlucky with this type of stuff. Nine times out of ten, if I'm with randoms, it's going to be like people that play with their elbows or something, or they're like holding <laughs> a baby and the baby pukes on them, and they're like, oh, well, I better not tell my team anything. I'm going to go AFK for 20 minutes. Yeah, or your keyboard shuts down your computer when you press B. Yeah. Yeah, I hit F4 to go to my equipment tab, and I, my computer just shuts down. <laughs> you can do We Do Raid Learner. They do learner sessions where like if you don't know anything, as long as you have the gear... I think it's on Saturdays. You can go in and you'll raid with a bunch of people that have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. I know people that have done that and there's actually been like uniques dropped and they've never been scammed out of like the couple times people have done it and there's actual uniques to drop. Like no one's been scammed that I know of. I mean, people will scam at some point. It's bound to yeah, happen. Yeah, I'm sure the odd scamming does, but a yeah. lot less than what you would expect because that's what I was worried about. So I was asking about it and it turns out that like if you end up scamming, they have a bunch of systems in place that can kind of track your account from the discord to your regular thing but anyways you get basically banned from it yeah you'll get banned from the we do raids group and if you're looking to run a lot of raids with especially with randoms 
if you scam it, then you're not going to be doing that's yeah. there. There's your unique. Go find some friends to do it with because you're not doing it with this group anymore. Yeah, it's 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 way more like it's way more efficient to do it with groups. So yep. typically, if you want to make a lot of money, you want to join a clan or do we do raids, blah, blah, blah. So that's why it's typically safe and fun because everyone's just there to make money. Have some yep. fun. So it seems pretty good. I had a pretty good experience, especially since I like. I really don't know too much about the raids. I know how to solo it. Wait, you didn't have a guy die 30 times and say, yo, how many, what was your split? Um, there was no unique. <laughs> oh, no, but how many herbs and stuff did you get? Like 500k? And then blank wants to trade with you. And you're like, what? I'm not giving you my, my fucking herbs. What? Yeah, the handful of times I did it, we didn't have one death. We were able to clear it one shot each time, which was great. It was, uh, it was pretty good. Now, before we move on, So, some unfortunate news for me, when we were doing, when you and I were doing a raid together with your group that you usually raid with, halfway through the last fight, I'm sitting there, and the strongest smell of skunk makes its way into my house. Nice. And as soon as that happened, my heart just dropped, and I'm just like, oh no, not again. Guys, weed isn't legal yet. Soon. (laughs) Yeah, luckily I opened the door and there's like a group of stoners who are just like, sorry, this is the only light we saw in this neighborhood. Yo, yo, can I get some wind cover? Open up your jacket, give me some wind cover and we hit this bong, dude. Why you guys, guys, it's like the middle, it's like, it's summertime, you don't need jackets on. Anyways, so I I had to like, holy shit, we have to rush through this fight. Luckily we were almost done the fight, so I was like, you know, I'm sure, I had my dog outside during this fight, by the way, so that's why I started panicking. So I'm like, Luckily, I don't think the skunk's going to be consist- like constantly spraying my dog for like five minutes like while this fight goes on. a five-minute stream of just fucking <laughs> yeah. juicing on your dog. If she's been sprayed, the skunk's <laughs> probably gone. If anything, she'll air out while we finish this, you know, the last two minutes of this fight. Yeah. So we did it, and I like left, went outside. Sure enough, a skunk had sprayed. She- Luckily, it didn't spray directly on my dog because i couldn't find like last time when it happened her face was like completely yellow yeah. she was like squinting and blinking it was bad luckily this time she smelled a little bit but i couldn't see any of it on her gave her a quick wash she was good to go turns out now this is what's weird i had a wheelbarrow up against the fence because i'm building a deck in my backyard so it's kind of just sitting there the next morning there was a giant puddle in that wheelbarrow and it it was a really strong smell from it and I kind of realized it hadn't rained in a couple days, so I didn't know where this water came from. So I guess the skunk sprayed the wheelbarrow. I I have no idea what happened there. You think it was just like collecting its juices? <laughs> just having its own little bath? Saving up for the summer? <laughs> <laughs> kind of unreal. Well, it's related, but not RuneScape related. Do you think like the skunk spray like tastes really bad? Or do you think it just smells bad? Like, what, if, what if your mouth's open and you get hit? Oh, it's got to be bad. I was reading about it that like, even being in the area of it being sprayed, a dog might vomit a bunch. I did notice with my dog, though, she was drooling a lot, like a bunch of drool was coming down. So I kind of panicked. And then I go on the Internet, Google all these articles about what ha- what to do or what symptoms of being skunked are. Your dog is just like, fucked up. <laughs> getting stoned as fuck off that skunk. <laughs> Shit. Sticky icky. They, yeah, they seem to drool a bunch, which is kind of common. It's nothing that's like deadly. But skunks are... Fuck it, they're what a bizarre creature. I mean, Ontario, we have a lot of skunks. I think I've mentioned it yeah. before. But yeah, there's like skunks that hang out in like the front of my my apartment building. You just walk out, and there's one just like laying down, and you're like, ah, oh, for. F-. And there's always like an old person just like sitting on the bench, like looking at it, and you're like, that <laughs> you're just playing with fire, goddamn it. <laughs> you see, yeah, you see some elderly person just getting sprayed, and you're like, dude, <laughs> oh dearie. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, stop it. Ooh. Oh, heavens. Anyways, yeah, that's the little another little skunk experience. It's so happened while I was raiding, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. Kind of kind of sucked. And then lastly, I've been kind of AFKing on my pure, getting a strength up because me and another person in the clan chat, we decided to have a little pure fight. I realized how terrible one, I realized how terrible I am at PKing again, but this time on a pure. Two, I realized that my account is kind of a cool account because he's a uh, a barrel chest anchor pure. He has 52 prayer and 60 attack. But he only had 50 strength because I basically got the bare minimum stats in order to get that, which means he was like level 53 and I had like f- like 49 health. Like I had no health at all. Someone could easily spec me out with a granite mole. So I've been training him currently at 65, 
strength and like 60 health. Got to get that range Just up. Kind of doing that. Got to like use, you got to use some like darts or something or like some MSB action and just like hit him with that anchor. Yeah, I, I'm going to get his stats up so he can actually not get killed in the wilderness as easily. And yeah. yeah, it's been AFKing at the sand crabs. I did. So if you're training sand crabs and you're kind of having this problem of like, I can't find sand crab spot because I keep getting either crashed or everyone's taken up the spot that has three sand crabs. If you don't know, sand crabs are very good experience for training melee and and range. And it's also very AFK. The problem is, is that it's such good experience. It's usually tough to find some that are open because everyone's there training. Go ahead and do the Klein of Karen quest on Zaya and go and do... Depths of Despair? Depths of Despair, that's it. Yeah. So I remember you mentioned this as well, that it unlocks a new spot to do sand crabs that not many people OP go to. as fuck, am I right? It is so good. Yeah, it's so nice. Normally, people are going to aim for a spot with three sand crabs where they can stand and they can AFK and kill three sand crabs on, on rotation. But quite often, it's so packed, you're just got to, you're lucky to get that and you're probably going to get crashed by some pure. So people just kind of opt to going to a spot that has two sand crabs. If you do those two quests, which uh, it'll take like an hour, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, a lot of running around. Do Clan of Karend, dump your 20% favor reward into Hasidius, and then go do Depths of yep. Despair, because you need 20% Hasidius to do that quest. Exactly. Yeah. So you do that, finish the quest. Won't take you too long, but there's a lot of running around, so if you don't have the teleports or stamina potions, it's going to take you like an hour or so. That's what happened to me. But they're super easy to do. Do Depths of Despair and unlocks a new cave, and that cave has a bunch of sand crabs in it, but it has a spot with four sand crabs. Yeah, it's got a four and a three spot. It's really nice. I've been going there, and for the past four or five days I've been doing it, I'll be surprised if I see even one person in that cave. If you, you usually see nobody in that cave, you just world hop, and you'll, it'll be a, a free cave. So you get a spot with four of them, and it's just super AFK. Yep. So anyways, just go ahead and train there if you're looking to... If you do sand crabs, go ahead and do those two quests, and you will not regret it. And it's cheaper than doing the private island. Um, if you're like, if you're oh, right. if you're a, a pure, island, isn't there? Yeah, if you're a pure, you're gonna have to eat because you know one defense. And I think the private island's 10k per entry. There's a couple four crab spots there, and there's some three spots as well. Right. But if you're trying to be like efficient and you're using teleport and stuff, like you bring like a skilling necklace and you teleport the woodcutting guild, which is right by the sand crabs. Mm-hmm. you're it's like what w- around like 1.3k per teleport so it's it's way more cheaper it's like you know 10 times less expensive on the teleport or like at least getting there it's mm-hmm. just it's a better it's a whole better scenario yep exactly so highly recommend that and then last i finished off this week with getting a master clue that required me to get 77 rune crafting so so I'm going to do that until I get super bored of runecrafting and decide to just boost for that level. So I'm at 73 currently. I'm running ZMI, which is, in my opinion, the best method of trading runecrafting experience. If you don't like runecrafting, that way is super awesome. I've talked about it in the past about how you would, a way to make it more efficient, bank fillers, remove the slots for the rune pouches and stuff like that. Don't drop your runes, save all the runes. Just bank all every time. Yeah. And another reason why I wanted to get or I want to get 77 runecrafting is because it unlocks the dark altar runecrafting method on Zaya, which is like a new way of training runecrafting for the most part. AFK. AFK, exactly. It's supposed to be very AFK while also still being all right experience. It's not the best, but it's not terrible experience. I mean, if you go from 77 to 99, it's like over 300 hours. Oof. Yeah, it's pretty bad, but it's also afk which is hugely important some of those skills they're kind of brutal to do but if you're yeah, afking is pretty boring but if you're playing a game on the side let's pretend a new fallout game is coming out you and you have two monitors and you want to play for the new fallout game wow would you look at that you sunk 50 hours into fallout while also sinking 50 hours into rune crafting yep that's another reason why i'm like okay i'm gonna follow through and try to get as close to level 77 as possible until i give up another problem though is that means i'm gonna have to level agility thieving fletching hunter and prayer and smithing and crafting did i mention crafting i think i did 
I gotta level all those up if I want to continue getting my Tears of Gothics experience back into runecrafting. Damn, dude. Yikes. I'm sure I'm missing something else, but let's move her on to the big news of the week. Ugh, I hate this part. Um... <laughs> okay. I hate doing this stupid <laughs> podcast. Okay, so the new update, I guess you guys have waited an hour to hear about, is the Theater of Blood, Raids 2. They don't like calling it Raids 2, but we're calling it Raids 2. Tob. I don't... Yeah, can we call it T-O-B? I much prefer that term. It sounds silly calling it R2. The only thing I don't like is you have to call it T-O-B, and then you have to call Raids 1 Cox, like C-O-X. I like that. And you're like, anyone down for some Cox? And someone's like, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> like, you're going to get those... I mean, I've made those comments. So if I'm doing it, someone else is going to do it. Of course, and that person's not even going to be geared for the the raid, so you're just like, motherfucker, you're not even answering my question. Yeah. Theater of Blood, it is new raids, and it is southeast of Port Phasmatis. There's like a new area in like the whole Mire Ditch area, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a vampire-themed raid if you've been living under a rock. Yeah. Sorry, it's in the Sanguinesti region, east of the Mire Ditch. Right. Correction. We're correcting during the episodes now. Perfect. Yeah, these are a bunch yeah. of names of regions that you would have only ever gone there one time to do a quest for. Suddenly, there's another reason to go there. Yeah. So, Theater of Blood is a linear progression raid. So, it's more similar to the traditional MMOs where it's a set like list of bosses and you'll start from boss one and you'll work your way to the end. Yeah, it is very team-oriented team heavy focus you can get there if you use the boat at port fast madness for 10k if you've done a taste of hope though you do get a teleport the necklace that brings you directly to the theater and the necklace does look kind of good for that fashion scape that new weapon damn it is important to mention if you do planning if you are planning to do a bunch of these raids that quest is like basically a must because you do not want to be trekking you know what i mean trekking over there from port fast madness or whatever yeah, so the main difference between A Taste of Hope and Xerix is that there's no skilling involved in the Theater of Blood. Yep. In Xerix, it's kind of like Dungeoneering Light. Like, there's, like, you skilling, and there's, like, you know, your scout knees, and your there's a different rotation. You gotta, like, you know, jump in and out of the raid to get the right layout. Like, for, for Theater of Blood, it's just set. These are the five bosses you do, and here you go. That being said... The maximum group is five, and it's geared between five, three to five people. Again, your traditional setup for kind of these type of raids, right? Most other games you have, it's usually five or more, but five is like, it seems like that's the sweet spot for... Yeah, for like dungeons and stuff, but not too much, not too little. That being said, it is balanced between a group of three to five. It is possible to solo it, like it's it's not impossible. The way the raids scale is very different to how Xerix was. Xerix was, if there's more people, depending on how many people, there'll be, like, more monsters to fight, they'll, like, hit harder, they'll have more health, like, everything's yeah. more with scaling. With Theater of Blood, all the bosses do the same damage, like, their stats are the exact same. The only difference is how many, like, ads or mobs will spawn during the fight. Yeah, and we'll go into more of the specifics later, so you can kind of understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it, it's kind of like if, you know, four people die and you're soloing, it's still possible. Yep. They don't want it to be like, this guy died, let's reset. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that being said, uh, you have to recruit people into your party, and there's a like a, a notice board in front of the raid, and you just go there, you form your party. The UI is pretty well done. It's a step up from the Chambers of Zarek party finder, the UI there. I do have my gripes about it, but I have gripes about everything, including me having gripes about things. <laughs> the way like you go to the party board you say hey i'm making a party and then people can apply and you just like refresh and you accept or, or deny them you can set your preferred group size your preferred level you can see the everyone who's in the party what their all their like combat related stats are yep. and i believe their kill count yeah and it shows the other person. So if someone's applying it'll show like their related information one problem i have with it is that especially i don't know how 
how populated it's going to be later on. But obviously on release, you got a shit ton of people there, a lot of parties being made, look, and they'll be on the recruitment board. The problem is half the time you can't tell if it's a party looking for randoms or if it's a party looking for waiting for their friends and clanmates to show up. So if you apply to it, you you could be set you could be left just sitting there waiting being like are they going to accept me? Did they go to the washroom or are they just not going to do anything because they're waiting for other people and they're just going to leave me sitting there. And there's no way to know if you're in a party. Like, let's say you've applied and you, like, walk to the front of the entrance. So, you don't know if you've been accepted. Oh, really? Like, there's no, like, um, UI on your screen while you have, like, a party create. Like, there's no way to know. Like, let's say me and you have a party and I'm the leader and you're standing mm. at the entrance to enter. You don't know how many people I've gotten in the raid. Okay. Because I know there is a little spot in, like, the top corner that lists, like, five empty slots where the names will kind of, as they join the party, they pop up into. Oh, really? Yeah, you didn't see that? No, I didn't notice that. But then again, I was i was usually the party leader sitting there clicking fucking refresh. Yeah, and the problem with the party leader is if you walk away to go to the bank or something like that, you kind of have to walk all the way back to the, the board to see who's applied to it. So sometimes if you're like, you have to sit there and watch the UI, the, the interface to see when people are applying for it, which yep. if you're not getting any hits, it's kind of annoying. You want to be able to go and kind of switch out some gears if you want to do that. You know what yeah. I mean? It would be nice to be able to say this guy's applied and this guy's applied. Um, if you do accept or like if you reject someone, uh, you do block them from reapplying. So you can't just like get griefed by some idiots, like some level fives just spamming invites on you. You can, you know, anyways, moving on, okay. though. So Theater of Blood, unlike Xerix, it has a unique wiping system in, in Xerix. If you die, well, OK, you lost some points, but you can continue. Just pick up where you left off and keep going. Yeah, exactly, which makes it great for soloing because you get to a boss, you can die 20 times, and the boss will, you'll eventually kill it, he'll slowly go down in the percentage of health he has. You just might not yeah. get a reward, but you'll complete it. So in the Theater of Blood, they have a a unique wiping system, which actually I think it's unique to all MMOs. I don't know any MMOs have something similar to this, but they have a, a wipe state and a purgatory state. So if you're in, let's say you're in a group of five, and you go in and you die you'll be put into, like, purgatory, which is pretty much you're just sitting on a balcony watching them at, like, a bad camera angle. You just kind of sit there and watch the fight. You're not, like, dead dead, but you're just not participating and you're bad. Yeah, it sure makes you feel that way. <laughs> yeah. If everyone Some dies... more than other. Yeah, if everyone dies, it's considered a full wipe and the raid is completely failed and you have to restart from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. When you when you do like a full wipe, there's a hundred k fee to get your items back. And if you jump in similar to Vorkath, like if you jump, like you can lose your items in the same way as Zalra or Vorkath. If you jump back in with items still in the chest, they'll just be destroyed. If you die again, like they kind of get overwritten. Yeah, so make sure you get them all out. That being said, if you are in Purgatory and your team completes the fight, you'll be released. And you can continue on doing the rooms with your raid. And we'll talk about all that stuff in a second. But with when it comes in terms of Hardcore Iron Man, it's pretty strict. So no matter what, if you die, if you go to the Purgatory State, if you disconnect in a fight, if your whole team dies, I guess you've already died, though, you will lose your Hardcore Iron Man status. So it's very, very unforgiving. Again, the opposite of Chambers of Zarek, where it's kind of like a mini game death you know what i mean it's similar to like the inferno safe, or yeah jad where you could die a bunch of times you just get free items from chambers of Zarek if you're able to complete it it's just free uniques basically you don't yeah. worry which i do kind of like i don't play a hard- hardcore iron man so i don't have any like issues being like oh it's unfair i'll never be able to do it it just means you'll have to be if you see somebody with some theater of blood gear it's kind of a it's a bigger statement on your character whereas a twisted it's a, bow, it's a huge statement yeah exactly whereas the twisted bow sure it's a really good weapon super rare but it's not like you had to risk much doing it you just had to spend the time grinding it out yep, yep. so the number of deaths occurred within the raid will affect the quality and quantity of your loot at the end and in the resupply phases and the resupply like phases are not really phases but there's two points within the raid where you can you'll go to a chest and there will be like food rewards and potion rewards dependent on how 
well you've performed in the raid. And the whole concept is like you, you know, trade supplies back and forth, you know, make sure everyone's got the best. But let's say you die during every single fight, you don't contribute, you'll get like a leeching reward, which will be like an onion. Yeah. So if you can't leech, you can't just like leech your way through the raids to get uniques. You can't like sit outside of a raid and just follow them. Like you're not going to get anything. It's not like a hundred percent set in stone, but it's, I am like everyone's pretty sure the way your reward is set is how much damage you've done and how much damage you've taken and if you have died or not. Dying like really is a big penalty. Yeah, exactly. And this this makes it so you really don't want to die because one, you're not helping your team kill the the boss faster and stuff like that. But also you can't supply your team with resources. You you know or I mean? yourself, you're just, yeah. Yeah, or yourself. You're just kind of holding your team back by a lot. Yeah, and you're not getting a, a unique. Yeah, exactly. And that's what makes me wonder. It's like with Chambers of Zarek, you have points that your total party is kind of working for, which kind of tells about like whether a unique will drop, I believe. And then you have your individual points, which is basically your cut of the loot. Am I am I getting that right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm curious if Theater of Blood, let's say you die every single time, you're going to get a leeching reward at the end. I'm curious if that means your other teammates have a less of a chance of getting a unique in their specific chest. I am I'm almost certain it doesn't. I think Yeah, okay. So and yeah, in Xerix, it's like your reward is a pool and everyone you guys like share like a reward pool and if someone's dying and losing you points, you're hurting your whole team. I think if everyone is playing very well except for you, they're still getting a good reward. They're not going to get less because you've died more. I think that's fair because it still hurts your team because for non-Iron Man teams, it's basically precedent to whoever gets the unique, you're going to sell it, you're going to split up the money money equally to everybody. If you're not going to get a good loot at the end of it, it's that's 20% less of a chance that your team's going to be getting a unique through, through the five of them, right? Yeah, that being said, if you're within the raid, no normal teleports will work. So no rings of life or defense capes or glories. I don't know. And no teleports work. But you can talk to Mysterious Stranger outside of the theater and you can buy a teleport crystal for 75k. I think it's pretty much just for hardcore Iron Man. There's you don't really have a reason to to bring one into a raid, you're wasting a valuable inventory slot for a one click telly to not die. Just having that that in your in your inventory, you're kind of like telling your team, "All right, guys, be prepared to teleport when things are looking grim." When really your mindset should be go balls to the walls until until you all die. You know what I mean? Don't go down without a fight basically. Yeah. The the last thing you want to see when you're with your group is like four people die and the last guy teleport out. You're like I, I think Man. everyone has had that scenario where if you're playing like an MMO or something with your team or with your buddies, there's that one like, I mean, I have this friend where you're you're playing like WoW or something and you're like, oh shit, come on guys, it's, it's you know, we're gonna die, like you're fighting some boss or some shit, I don't know, and then you just see your one buddy's like running out of the dungeon because he doesn't want to die, and you're like, oh, well, now we're right, fucking fuck dead. Fuck this, guys, I'm out. And you're just like, man, we least. could have actually done it if you stayed, but now we're all dead, but you're alive at least. All yeah, right. You need to, to have that confidence of like, give it your all. You know what I mean? Yep. If one dies, we all die. Yeah. So logging out in any way through disconnecting or manually logging out during a fight will be treated as a death. So you'll lose your hard crying, man. So you enter that fight and you try and do anything cheesy, you're 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 gonna die. Like you're gonna lose your status. They're making it so there's no way a hard crime man can like leech a unique. They want it to be like a status symbol to have that Avernick or the rapier or whatever. And it seems like they've really spent the time like it's it's super punishing, but that's only because they know if there's an exploit that someone will find, somebody will find it in oh, order yeah. to bypass some of the levels. Yeah, it is important to note though that like if you're in between fights and you disconnect, I don't know how it is for logging out, but if you disconnect, you can still log in and you'll be where you were at as long as the fight hasn't started. I know I did see some of that going on. Yeah, typically if you re-log, if you're trying to log back in 
it'll try and connect you to where like with your party and stuff but if they can't you'll be outside of the raid you'll be just gone you'll be in the lobby area and jagex does know the difference between a logout and a disconnect so Mm -hmm. at least they say they do yep if you log out outside of an encounter such as like in the corridors or whatnot it will be considered safe and if yeah like i said if they can't you know connect you to your party or whatever they can't find you know a way to get you there they'll just put you out and you'll you'll be out of the party and in the lobby outside of the theater anyways moving on from the death mechanics though they have a really cool feature which is spectating kind of fits in the whole theater aspect too which is kind of nice if you're not already in a party you can name a player you'd like to observe or you may select recent party, which will show them a party that recently formed. And you can just go in there and watch, you know, some parties do some do some raids. This is an easy way, or I guess the, it might be the only way, actually, to get your music cape back for some players. It, it, each room does have, like, a song, its own little song, so... Yeah, and all the way up until the the rewards room at the very, very end. So it means, like, if you're specting a party, you're kind of want a spectator party that's going to make it all the way through right yep. yeah it's a good way to like learn little tricks it's a good way to just kind of spectate and see what's up you- yeah and that's the thing too like if you're wanting to learn the raids i mentioned before with we do raids let's say you're you have to do some runs with chambers of Zarek with your little learning party but with this it offers the ability to watch a team that maybe you're on Discord with them and you're talking in the voice chat and they're kind of explaining what they're doing while they're doing it and that's kind of your way to kind of dip your toes in and learn a little bit of the fight before actually going in and dying a bunch and only providing onions to your party. Yep, so you can go to the new NPC in the Grand Exchange. I believe she's northeastern part near the spirit tree. I could. She's like kind of a bit of ways away. Her name is Abigailia. She's a Mortania refugee who hangs out at the GE lives in Lumbridge, but she's renting the upstairs of the general store. She explains Mortania in the theater. You know, she's got some lore, but, you know, who cares about that? Maybe you can cover that in a, in a future episode or something. I don't know. Yeah, once we're running dry on other other topics. Yeah. If you want to spectate, you must be free from poison or disease, and you must have an empty inventory and have nothing equipped to so keep that in the mind. The last thing you want is like 20 people ice barraging from the spectator stand. Yeah. You're just like, oh, shit. It would be kind of cool yeah. if you could elk and watch them, though. Alking, yeah, yeah, that's true. That would make it a, a great spot. You know what I mean? You see a lot of people, I don't know if they still do, but back in the day, back in like the 2005 era, you'd always see people either alking at the dueling arena watching it. You'd see people alking near the wilderness by Edgeville or in Edgeville by the wilderness, they'd be alking and watching fights, or they'll be at the fight caves. Back when that mini game was actually populated, you'd have mm-hmm. people just alking and they'd jump into the game, but they'd just be alking and watching people fight. Yeah. But uh, I guess they they went super hard on, this isn't really punishing, but they're eliminating any possible way that somebody could figure out a bug or an exploit and cause problems. Mm-hmm. That's it for that stuff. I think we're all kind of waiting for the uh, list of rewards that you can get. The new items that have come into the game. So first of all, there's there's two new potions. There's the Bastion potion and the Battle Mage potion. The Bastion is a range and defense potion. It's as good as a ranging potion and a super defense. Just kind of put together. Requires 80 Herblore and you need a Vial of Blood, a Cadentine, a Wine of Zamorak, and you'll get 155 Herblore experience for that potion. The Battle Mage Potion is a magic and super defense put together. 80 Herblore, Vial of Blood, Cadentine, and Potato Cactus, and you get 155 Herblore experience for making it. Yeah, it's the super combat potion version for range and magic. Let me backtrack a little bit, because we kind of brushed over some of this lore here. Oh, yeah, yeah, do it up. The vampires have long believed that there is great power in blood, a belief that has only increased with their recent experiments with Hail Malchemy, words are heard these vials contain modified blood that enhances the power of potions and can be used to chair and can be used to charge new weapons found from within the theater of blood oh yeah the first unique to talk about is the avernic defender and there is there's of course there's lore you want to take it away (laughs) oh hell yeah during the second age avernic weaponry was common amongst the forces of the empty lord the empty lord 
aka Lord Zeros. These weapons crafted by Avernix smiths in the liquid fires of Infernus, the Demon Realm, were some of the most powerful around. Today, Avernic weapons are incredibly rare. The secrets behind their creation have having long since been lost. Lady Verzik's Avernic Defender is one of the few to still remain, and is a relic from her time in the service of the Empty Lord. The Aver- oh, This is your part. Oh, the Avernic Defender is an upgraded version of the Dragon Defender, requiring 70 attack and defense to equip it. Due to its oh, you want you want you want to take this? <laughs> Sweet, mixing it up. Due to its age, the full defender has been destroyed, leaving behind only the hilt. To create the okay, never mind. Uh, yours again. Oh yeah, yeah. To create the Avernic defender, you must combine the Avernic hilt and the dragon defender. The hilt itself is tradable, but once the dragon defender and the Avernic hilt are combined, it is untradeable you can dismantle the avernic defender to retrieve the dragon defender but you'll lose the hilt in the process oof yeah if you die below 20 wilderness with the avernic defender it will revert to a broken avernic defender which can be repaired for one mil by using the item on purdue the player that gets the kill would be rewarded one mil from the defender in addition to the normal Hmm. loot that their opponent would drop if you die above 20 Wilderness, it will be treated as the same as any untradeable item, meaning the person wearing it will not get the broken defender back, and it will be lost. That's interesting that it's a 1 mil loss for the person who died, as well as a 1 mil gain for the person who killed. Because yeah. normally, there's a bit of a difference in that to act as a gold sink. You know what I mean? Like, the person who yep. killed it would normally get, like, 900k, just so that 100k gets lost in the abyss of gold sinks. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a little weird, but hey, I mean, you kill someone that has an average defender, you kind of deserve one mil. Sure, it's a, it's really, it's really good. Do we have it in? Do we have the stats for the dragon defender up? Yep, the average defender is the new best in slot offhand. Of course, it is okay. So I go, I'll just list its attacks. So it's got. 30 stab, 29 slash, 28 crush attack bonus with a minus 5 magic and a minus 4 range. Its defense bonuses are the same as, like, its attack bonuses. Yep. And it's, But the mo- more importantly, it has 8 melee strength, which now makes it the new best in slot offhand for melee, beating out the DFS. How much strength bonus does the D- DFS have? 7. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it is, it's, it's pretty goddamn good. You might not know, the Dragon Fire Shield had the highest strength bonus. Strength bonus is the bonus on what you can damage, right? It affects your max hit. Yeah, exactly. You see a lot of people with the Dragon Defender, though, because even though it's just slightly lower in strength bonus, it had a lot of more attack bonus, which is your accuracy. Yep. This being better than the DFS in both strength bonus, obviously it's... You know what I mean? It's yeah. going to be your go-to for everything. And even if you're doing dragons, you just bust out that super extended anti-fire. Is that what it's called? Super superior? I don't, whatever it is. The new anti-fire that came out with Vorkath. You just bust this thing out with it, and you don't have to worry. Yep. Uh, so in comparison to the defender, it's got plus five on the attack bonuses. It's got more negative on, on mage and range, but for the melee, it's, uh, it's mm-hmm. an extra five. And same thing with the defense. And two strength, so it's it's pretty good. I can't wait until I can say I, I I get one, which will be a long time from now. But they're gonna be pretty expensive for a long ass time. Have you seen how this looked in game yet? I have not. Yeah, unfortunately, I have not either. It's so the image with the dev blog. It's kind of like a black defender with kind of like a gray point. Yeah. So I'm curious how this will look in game, if it's going to look just like a recolored defender or if it's going to be like bigger. You know what I mean? If it's going to look different than the other defenders, which I imagine mm-hmm. it would, but I yeah. haven't actually seen it yet, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess we'll move on to the, the next item, which is the Sanguine SI staff. Oh, some lore. You want to you wanna take it away with the lore? Ooh, yeah. One of the more recent additions to Lady Versic's collection, the Sanguine SI staff is a powerful weapon that was crafted by Lord... Lower Neil Draken himself. The staff was given to Lady Verzik by Lord Lo- Lower Neil Draken as a reward for assisting him in their fights against the seven priestly warriors. 
also something we covered in a past lore episode. Would you look at that? Nice. It's tying in together. The the Sanguine SI staff is a new tradable magic weapon requiring 75 magic to wield. It is identical in terms of stats of a Trident Swamp, but it can hit one damage higher. Pretty nice, you know, extra max hit. I wonder if that is with, like, the best, you know, the percentage damage. I have damage. a feeling they just were, like, Trident, damage, let's just give it one max hit no matter what. No matter what the circumstances are, it's just, you get one extra hit. Okay, so even with full Ancestrals, you don't think it'll suddenly be six better hits? Or six higher? I don't think so, no. Hmm, Okay. I'm if probably wrong. Let, let's be real. I'm probably wrong, but I, I don't know. I think regardless, the the thing that is really nice about this staff is that it has an added effect of a one out of six chance to heal you fifty percent of the damage dealt when attacking an NPC. It is nice. three blood runes per cast, and the staff does not degrade. Okay, so it's just straight three blood runes. You don't have to worry about scales or anything, which I guess that makes sense. In comparison, the Guffins is what, like a 25% chance or some shit to heal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, successful attacks of a 25% chance to heal, 100% of the damage. So it's, you know, not as accurate, but it's also magic. It's, I think it'll still be pretty good. Uh, anyways, I should continue. Um, t- if you want to charge a staff, you need to fill a Vire Well found within the lobby area of the theater. With vials of blood and blood runes, you kind of notice these weird fountains around that you can like check or fill. It is for it is for the staff. So once okay. done, the staff can be dipped into the well to consume the number of charges you require, so long as there is a suitable amount of vials of blood and blood runes. So not only is there a charge like there is a cost per cast, there is a total charge in general. So, like, I guess they don't really put in effect the vials of blood because there's other factors, there's other things you can use these we- these wells or whatever for, but... Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think it's, like, what, 300 blood runes and a vial of blood to, like, store into the, th- the thing? I'm not too sure. Anyways. Yeah, they're, it's a bit confusing the way they describe the way it charges, but I guess it's something that once you have it, you'll have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I will say the so they have a picture here in the dev blog of the person holding it. Not a huge fan of the way it looks. It kind of looks like a Halloween cosmetic. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a clue scroll or something like something you would get from a clue scroll. It's it's like a bat with its wings. It's like touching its like ar- forearms. If it had forearms or if they do, I, I don't know. I'm not a bat expert, but it's like it's like touching its wings together in front of its body. It's like a weird looking, and it's a staff. Imagine a big halibird, but instead of the the blade at the end, it's just a bat with its wings kind of uh, pointing forward to look like the blade, sort of. Yeah. This pic- The picture they have here is really not flattering. If it does look good in game, it does not show it in this picture, at least in my opinion. I mean, to be fair, Ancestral looks pretty bad in this picture, too. Yeah. Okay, yeah, good call. Fair enough. Yeah. So, anyways, we shall move on to the item I complained and also swooned over. I'm kind of conflicted. <laughs> anyways, it Your is the grassy relationship. Yeah, the grassy rapier. Um, you want to take it away with some of that lore? Of all Vampirium tribes, none were more vicious than the gr- the grassy. These vampires took pride in their combat abilities and would regularly bait their prey into a battle so that they could test their prowess. The rapier in Lady Verzik's vault was once wielded by a fearsome Grazi warlord. It was given to her by her father, who came to possess it after the warlord challenged him to battle, one that he did not survive to tell the tale. The Grazi rapier is a new tradable stab weapon that requires 75 attack to wield. It does not it is not charged and does not degrade. The attack speed of the rapier is the same as an abyssal tentacle. Its uh, its stats are 94 to stab and 55 slash with 89 melee strength. All right, so it's kind of one of the biggins, I guess, because we now have a new best in slot one handed weapon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's expected for this thing to be pretty damn expensive. You know what I mean? It's gonna be like. I don't want to say the twist. It, it, it's probably gonna just. It's gonna stay real. I th- I believe. That in the future it'll still have a retain its high value. Yeah, like two hundred mil plus. I feel 
Uh, depend. Well, this is okay. We're making these assumptions, not knowing the actual drop rates. It could be like common and just people having, you know what I mean? Like it could be like one in eight per raid, and it's like, oh, well, now there's a bunch in the game. My my biggest worry, <laughs> which I'll address later on, because um, I think Jagex thought this through, would be that the Grazi would replace the, the tentacle whip, which means a lot of the abyssal whips that were getting consumed would not be getting consumed anymore because the people that are going through a whip a week now aren't ever again yeah it's true yeah i guess you were worried that like at some point the whip will drop down to a 500k value where it's always been at least 1.5 mil which kind of gone up since because of the new raid coming out yeah Still, it is, it's still a possibility, but it, it, you know, like I said, uh, it's speculation and Jagex has done some things. They've actually thought this out. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a little suspect. One of them's listening. And then during their like fap time or tap time, they're like, Hey, I thought of this really neat point. What happens to all the whip sync stuff? And they're like, wow, Ma Jed, you're a genius. Oh my God, dude. I think it's more on the lines of, you know, it's, you know, Wednesday or Thursday morning, they come into the work and they all go, hey, did you guys hear that the new uh, Wilderness podcast episode? And like, yeah, man, we're listening on the way to work today. Yeah, what did you guys think about this? You know, I've, I have a feeling they have it in their meeting. They have I don't think, meeting I don't think anyone in the UK has a three hour commute, though, or two hour commute. It's like 30 minutes, right? Maybe they're taking a shower. Maybe they wake up in the morning. And that's their alarm clock. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? What a great way to wake <laughs> up. <laughs> Just wake up in a bad mood every day. <laughs> I don't think this is going to be a thing where you're going to be seeing, like, it is the new best in slot one-handed weapon. It's the new thing that someone comes up to the G and says, tell you what, mate, give me five mil, you won't regret it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, and they're, yeah, wielding that thing, but I would be very surprised if you see Piers rocking it, well, not a Pure, if the Pure has 75 attack, let's just say, and he's going for 99 strength, and he's like, well, gotta get the Garazi Rapier, because that's the fastest way to change my strength. Like, I don't think we're going to be really seeing that. I think it's, like, usability or, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying it's going to be, it's not as good as a Twisted Bow, nowhere near as good, but I mean, if you're using a Grazi Rapier, it's going to be in the same vein as a Twisted Bow where you have a lot of money and you're buying just the best in slot for, like, end game content. Like, you're not buying a Twisted Bow to level up range. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, exactly. I hope. I swear to God, if anyone's <laughs> doing that, like slide in my DMs. I got some, <laughs> I got some things I could do for that, for that Tebow. <laughs> but like, I don't know. It's not, it's like, it's not like a strength training weapon or anything, but you would be using it for, you know, obviously the raids. I feel like, yeah, it's not going to be a common weapon that you're going to see someone like killing sand crabs with. If you do, then like, they they're they they were on that bitcoin hype train at some point they cashed yeah. out at a good time <laughs> cashed out and cashed in with those bonds yeah exactly now again i haven't seen this in game yet like i haven't seen the picture of somebody wearing it but the picture of it it kind of looks a little plain i mean what could you really do though you know yeah that's, that's unless problem, it's like a but- lance like a two-handed lance and some Dark Souls looking ass shit. Like, there's not really much Ooh. you could do. It's not a bad idea. I was just yeah. expecting, you know, with your top tier gear, you, you look at the twisted bow and it's. I guess you have more to play around with because it's a bow, but yeah, I don't know. No, no, I understand. It's a rapier. They kind of um, push themselves in this corner with like being unique with the cosmetics. Yeah. Um. You never know. There could be some cool attack effects. Yeah, that's true. I'm picturing it now. You could have some pretty cool animations for when you attack with it. And it might look really good, you know, when you're we're wearing some of the other armor that we're probably going to be up be discussing soon. Um, it might look really nice, you know what I mean? Speaking of, let's let's talk about the 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 name the armor that's got four names or three names, the Justice Sarge, Judiciar, and the Justicar. Who knows what the actual name is? We'll find out in a later episode, but <laughs> there's some lore you want to take it away yeah I, i'm safe i'm pretty sure it's safe to say it's judiciers anyways the judiciers were elite warriors in sarah Doman's army during the god wars unlike the rest of the forces the judiciers operated oper- operated alone often working as assassins and saboteurs 
selected from a variety of races, they were all chosen by Saradoman himself, who granted them power. When the vampires invaded Hollow Vale, some of the last remaining judiciaries fell in battle. The judiciary armor found in Lady Verzig's vault was taken from one of these fallen survivors. Fallen warriors. God damn it. Fallen survivors. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, side note, how do you die like level 70 vampire? Jesus. You you, uh, you forget to bring that... A, no, not a silver weapon. Garlic? You're not wearing those rings you were talking about earlier. Oh, the Aferity Aids, yeah. Yeah, no one trained their crafting, so... Yeah, true. They were, all the Judicier Warriors were NMZ prods. Yeah, mo- yeah, evidently. <laughs> evidently. <laughs> yeah, so the armor is a brand new set of tradable tank-oriented gear requiring 75 defense to equip. Each individual piece offers the same defensive stats slightly higher than the Toreg gear with Ooh. some additional prayer bonus. When the full set of Justicars or the ju- blah, 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 the armor is equipped, I'm just gonna like phase over that name from from here on out. <laughs> all incoming damage is taken. All incoming damage taken is reduced by number divided by three thousand. So you know at, the the number is what your defensive bonus is in that respective defensive bonus. You know. So this is based on the style of each attack. So let's say it's crush and you had the defensive bonus of 450. It's 450, you know, over 3,000, 50%, blah, 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 blah. Good. So it's got some good defensive reduction. Keep in mind, it does not apply to PvP combat. I think I complained about this in a previous episode and that would be OP, but we good. Then again, we have talked about PVMers needing to survive a little bit more, or at least having the more more options to survive when yeah. they're in the wilderness. Yeah, I believe this is a new mechanic, I, I, or new effect. I don't think we talked about this before, but wearing the full armor alongside the items with similar effects, such as the Elijah Spirit Shield, which has a 70% chance of reducing the damage you receive by 25%, the damage reduction will apply after the Elysian Shield. So, for example, if a player were to be hit for 40 crush damage while wearing the armor with a 450 crush defense and the Ellie, the Ellie and the Ellie was activated, the damage would be reduced to 30, like 25% of 40 is 30, and yep. then the armor would produce would produce it would reduce it by a further 15%. So it would go. It would be a 40 down to a 25, which is fucking huge. Okay, so yeah, it does stack on top of each other. So, interesting. I like that. It sounds overpowered as fuck. Keep in mind, they don't they don't stack in PvP, and you're not going to be wearing this when you're killing Dark Beasts, or like, I don't know, what do you kill in the game? Besides your Something time. That, and- like, again, you need to be wearing all three of them together. Right, it's similar to like and an Ellie. the Darox, <laughs> and, yeah, and with an Ellie, a fucking seven hundred mil weapon. But like, like Darox armor. Notice how I said Darox for that one. Yeah. Anyways, dorks. similar to that one. How often do you see someone just rocking the top and the legs? Almost yeah. never, because they're gonna probably be wearing Torags instead. Yeah. It's something where you're gonna be wanting to rock the full set to actually take advantage of this new perk that comes with it. Yeah. Sure, it might be really good at Bandos, but keep in mind, this guy's probably wearing a bill worth of gear. The 20 mil four-way split doesn't really matter to him. Like, he's, you know... Like, realistically, yeah. you're not going to be using this at, like... You're going to be using four raids. Like, f- specifically for Theater of Blood, if you're using a setup like this. You're not going to... Unless you just have a bunch of, like, friends that are just getting in the game, and you're like, Hey, I'll tank Bandos for you guys. Oh, you're all dead? Oh, that sucks. Well, I'm never going to die here. Like, Yeah, I forgot, I forgot to tell you to pray range. Yeah. So it is super tanky, but it's really nice because we, we've we talked about it. We do, like, need some tank gear. The DPS meta does get super tiresome, and we'll go about, we'll talk about it more into detail about tanking and how it's necessary in the new raid for some th- for some things, but we'll, we'll go about that t- Talk about that later. For a long time in RuneScape, it's, and it basically still is, is that for a good defense, when you're doing, you know, some sort of PVMing, for the most part, a good defense is your best offense, right? Yeah. It's it's nice to get a, a different variety of this stuff. Yeah, it's it's nice. And going off the picture, and we have seen plenty of different 
you know, they debate on how this thing should look for a while, but their final setup, it looks really nice. It look at least this picture, and I think I've seen little bits and pieces of it in game. Super nice looking gear. Um, I'm not okay. I'm not the biggest fan of the legs, but keep in mind. Oh yeah, the same image and on the same page, the ancestral looked really bad, and I I really liked the the outfit, the ancestral outfit. Yeah, so it's a long skirt. So- they were kind of debating on a long skirt or a shorter skirt. I'm a big fan of the long skirt. It kind of gives that like samurai kind of look. Although I guess samurais have a shorter. Okay. Skirt, side note: thing. Can you can you cue the conspiracy music? Oh, jeez. Do you have that available? It's not really conspiracy, but I got I got some questions. Alrighty. It is kind like why is every good leg leggings skirts? We got Banos tassets, which is a mini skirt. We got Armadale chain skirt, which is a chain skirt. We have ancestral robe bottoms, which are like it's a long dress type thing. We got yeah. Verax, which is like it's good, but it's it's the same thing. It's like a knee high skirt type thing. Now this this armor is also a skirt. Hmm. Carol's is really good, and that's also a skirt. Arams, Arams is a, is a Arams is a skirt too, but um, that makes more sense. It's Meiji, but yeah, everything's fucking skirts. It's all skirts all the way down, except for Torags and Darok. But we're not gonna talk about that. We do know that RuneScape's big demographic of players is largely males. Males pretend to be females. Yeah, there is a large amount of that. This could be a way to try to bring in some more females into the game to kind of balance things out a little bit. You know, let's say someone's just another another item. Sorry to cut you off, yep. but void. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, sorry. Go on though. It could be it could be something. Let's say a non there's a there's a female who's playing female who doesn't play RuneScape and they're just kind of on YouTube watching Rule Paul's Drag Race polluting their boyfriend's front page of YouTube videos with suggestions all being real Paul drag race videos anyways mm-hmm. and then suddenly they see this RuneScape video they misclick it or it auto plays and that comes up and they go that armor looks so cool I think I might need to sunk in thousands of hours of my time into this game to make my character look like that or probably not okay. or you're like you're playing RuneScape and your buddy goes dude why are you always in skirts bro Bro, come play <laughs> Fortnite, bro. There's no skirts in Fortnite, bro. Come on. <laughs> Fair You're enough. little bitch, bro. Always wearing skirts in your video games, dude. Pushing you around <laughs> and shit, bullying you. I don't know. I, I, it's just, it's just, it's just something I noticed. Everything. They're always skirts. They're always skirts. Or a kilt. It could be a kilt. Skirt. Okay. Well, I mean. I if I were to go out into battle as a warrior, I feel like I would much prefer a chainmail skirt over legs. I feel like that those would chafe. You can't spread your legs that far. No, but I mean you're not really needing to in battle unless you're like stretching or something. I mean climbing up you always, ladders. You always gotta stretch you for up. a good workout. Yeah, but I feel Imagine like Imagine pulling a hammy. You're fighting Lady Verzik, tra- which we'll talk about later, and you pull a hammy. But imagine rushing towards Lady, Z- Ver- Lady Verzik with some tight chainmail leggings. It might chafe a little bit, and then you're kind of like having to stop the fight to go put on some baby powder. It could cause your team to like teleport out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I don't know. It's just something mm, like there. It's always skirts. Is there something like if someone's like a expert on like medieval times? They're like, is that? Like, I never knew, like, warriors... Because I know it's kind of loosely based off, like, medieval-esque magic-type period. Like, Jagex, Gilnor, RuneScape. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you gotta do a lore segment on why there's so many goddamn skirts. Ooh, that's really, uh... That, that's a tough one. That's gonna take me, like, going and reading through, like, textbooks and shit. Yeah. Or going on the Ask Historians subreddit, and then asking that, and they're gonna be like... Dude, RuneScape is not historic historically accurate. Like you don't Did you do any research before coming on here? Dude, just no, do like your master's really. thesis on why skirts 
Earth, the, why there's so many good skirts in RuneScape. I don't know. Going back, though, I, this is totally off topic, but for the longest times, when I w- would do Barrows, I always thought that, like, Darox and Toregs and maybe Arums, that those were, like, the males while the other ones were females because you know what i mean it kind of looked like it was it would look better on a female character varak though what kind of what kind of female got that titty hanging out while she's in battle you know what i mean that's just ergonomically you're just not aerodynamic at that point well have you seen some of those superhero movies like they're not really you know like wonder woman she's got like a breastplate but it kind of just shows her midriff a bit you take a sword to the stomach you know that no but i mean like if you look at varax it's literally like you got like spaghetti strings over the nips. One's gonna pop out mid battle. You're done, skis. Let's just say they're hitting through your defense. You're not hitting through their defense. <laughs> it's the same with same with a male character, though. <laughs> no, but like I don't know. I just noticed it's kind of he's got the skirt. He's got the like I guess the banos is kind of like a weird chest play with those exposed areola eyes. Yeah, banos is a weird one. Honestly, I, I think it's just easier to make the the skirt look epic, sort of. You know what I mean? Because it, it does look pretty cool. I'm trying to picture leggings on it, and it might just... The leggings could probably just turn out to look like steel trimmed. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, Food for thought, maybe. Anyways, let's, let's actually continue, though, because we do have another item to talk about. And that is the Scythe of Vitur. Um, oh, boy. Take it away. Oh, shit. Of all of Lady Verzik's possessions, one of the most valuable is the Scythe of Vitur. This legendary weapon was once wielded by the founder of House Vitur, a vampire now worshipped as a god. The Scythe is... Okay, no, never mind, this is your part. Oh, I hate how these, they break this up. Yeah, they need to, like, bold and italicize uh, certain text. <laughs> yeah. So, the, the Scythe of Vitur is a hard-hitting, tradable, two-handed weapon... It has no special attack, but it can hit up to three enemies once in a one an arc. That's one by three. Uh, cool. If it's in front of you, of course. Similar to the special attacks of the dragon or crystal halibird, each swing can also hit a large creature multiple times. In this instance, it's three times. The halibirds are twice, but yeah, the scythe can only hit a maximum of three NPCs and can only hit a maximum of like one hit on a maximum of three times. You know what I mean? Like it's not like it. Yeah, you can't stack nine of them up and then hit them all. Yeah. Um, The way the damage is calculated is the first hit is 100% of the damage, the second hit deals half, and the third deals 25%. Okay, now I wonder if that's like... I guess it's the guy you're clicking on is going to get the 100% damage, but I wonder Um, how it differentiates who gets the second and third damage. Regardless which enemy is your primary target, is rolled independently based on your attack bonuses versus the NPC's defense. Okay. So, so different monsters, yeah. Yeah. The scythe requires 75 attack and strength to wield and has two variants, an uncharged and a charged version. The uncharged trident has relatively low stats, but once charged, it gains additional bonuses. Charging the scythe costs one one hundredth of a vial of blood. Three blood runes, meaning 100 charges, would be a vial of blood and 300 blood runes. This is where hmm. the answer kind of comes in with how the Sanguine S dice is charged. But it's the same thing as charging the staff. You have to go to a a like a, a well in the theater, to a Vire well, and you dip your weapon or whatever in with that, and you consume as many charges as you want. So it seems like you just put in a couple vials of blood and a bunch of blood runes. And you just, that's kind of like how the charges and stuff are used for both weapons. Right. I'm assuming if you uncharge it, you just lose the vial. You're not going to get like an eighth of a vial of blood. You might lose yeah. that. You might get your blood runes <laughs> back, but you might lose the vials of blood. I'm not really too sure. Um, I guess we'll go over the stats. So the attack bonus stab is 50, slash is 75, crush is 10, negative 6 to magic. And it's got 50 melee strength. That is the uncharged version. The charged version has a stab attack bonus of 70. Slash is 110. Crush is 30. Magic is still negative 6. But the melee strength is 75. So it's it's a huge difference. Oh, yeah. 
It looks similar to like with the dragon fire shield when it's uncharged, it's as good as a mithril, but when it's charged, it's suddenly like a lot better. Basically, with it with it uncharged, it's as strong as a it's like in between a rune scimitar and a rune two hander. In terms of stats. Alright. But charge is probably <laughs> it's probably a little bit better than that. New best in slot, baby. Oh yeah. Not bad, not bad. There's a lot of speculation between this item of like how busted it will be. We'll talk about it more in detail with our overview with some of the bosses, but this will be really good for some of the bosses. Really good. In general, you know what I mean? I wonder if it's going to be like what you're going to use to kill any boss. I, that I wonder to, if it becomes you know, like meta, quote parentheses or quotes around meta um, for DPSing at Bandos. Because right now the meta is max range if you have r- rigor. I wonder if this gives you better DPS than that. I wonder if like being able to wear full judiciaries with this thing if you're going to be able to kind of do both roles, if you're soloing. Mm-hmm. I should mention that the charge version does give you 10 crush defensive and 8 slash, but minus 2 stab. Mm. So if it's charged, you will be a little bit tankier. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not too sure. That's actually a really good point. I didn't think about that with like the staff or something. Because if the, the Sanguinesti staff is pretty much a better trident that could heal... You could wear a tank gear with an Ellie and, like, potentially heal up on some of the bosses. Depends on if you're going to splash on them, right? Well, like, some of the bosses, right? Some of them might have a low enough yeah. defense where you're, you're, it could be viable to, like, oh, I need to heal up. You know, throw a couple yeah. of hits, hope you get a good proc or two, and then save some of those supplies. I don't know. Um, Pretty interesting, though. I want, like generally like we'll talk about some of the raids and where we think some of these items or some of the bosses where we think these items sit with the those fights but i'm kind of curious as like what people will find out outside of the raid too with some of these items and how they yeah, fare definitely. and like realistically if you had it would it be worth it like what if this becomes mana for like ohm and you're killing the melee hand with this yeah Probably i can, not, I can see that but like just humor me you know that'd be kind of interesting if you're not bringing a scythe to kill the melee hand now i haven't done the numbers myself i've just seen this these thrown around but i've heard it's gonna cost like one mil an hour to use in terms of like the charges and stuff like that yeah it will be it will be hard to determine once the vial like we'll see where the vials of blood sit um we'll see where blood runes because maybe raids give a lot of blood runes that would make sense yeah, maybe you're maybe you're potentially like a thousand blood runes for your time because with the uniques it is a similar thing as Xerix and I guess some of the other PVM bosses. But you're hunting for the uniques, but the resources are to t- to tie you over in the meantime, so you're not going broke. Unless yeah, you know exactly. you're dying a bunch, but you know that's besides the yeah. point. Um, yeah, it does look really cool. It's like your classic scythe with some like spikes or whatever sticking out it's just whatever it's got like but it a has lantern like a vi- or a vial of blood hanging from it yeah exactly a lantern of blood or whatever and the thing looks really cool i would love i i haven't seen this in game yet but this is probably what i want to see the most in game to see how it looks like your movement animations and the attack animations it it's potentially to look really really good yeah um i feel like this is a this was inspired by the f- Evandus flail the flail of Evandus whatever you want to call it oh yeah that new weapon that came from a taste of hope yeah as in like you know I mean they're a bit different um it's kind of like it's a staff with like a scythe hook thingy hanging but now it's like a scythe hook thingy with a thing hanging from it I don't know I feel like it's kind of similar maybe it was inspired it's somewhat but I do think it looks pretty cool Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on, we have one more thing to talk about, and it's a cosmetic. Oh, boy. It is the Sinhaza Shroud. Um, I think I think this is you. Oh, there's some more for this, too. In the courtyard outside the Theater of Blood, a mysterious figure watches. 
No one knows why he is there, but he takes a great interest in, in any who would enter the theater. Anyone who manages to survive the theater may find that this figure has a strange gift for them. A shroud of unknown origin. Yeah, so the, the shroud is entirely cosmetic that you receive after completing the theater of blood 100 times. It is possible to change the appearance of the cape after completing theater of blood 500, 1000, 1500, and 2000 times respectively. Cool. The first time they worded it, the first time they pitched this idea was you would get the cape after doing the theater of blood once, and then you upgrade it 100, 500, 1000, 1500, 2000. Mm. But they've kind of gone back on that. Um, they implemented a similar cape to the challenge mode, you know, in Xerix. So they opted out of the same method. It's now 100 for the first cape. L- similar to the challenge mode cape, I think this looks like some hot garbage. It's pretty underwhelming. It just looks like it looks kind of like a regular cape. Maybe it's a bit longer, but at a hundred kills, it it's uh just just purple with a black trim. Then as you get your one hundred or your five hundred kills and your thousand one fifty and two thousand, it adds this like gold arrow or this gold V. If um. I don't, I don't even know the rankings. It's some like you, you might see them with military ranks, like that private v, you see stuff. In the clan chat. Getting your stripes, quite literally, like you're getting your stripes with these. Like it's just an additional stripe. Yeah, and they just kind of go tier. down the the cape. Yeah. Now, like it's pretty underwhelming. It doesn't look it horrible, look, it but the fucking, thing is, it does. It looks like some shitty ass crocodile Pac Man chasing other shitty ass crocodile Pac Man up your back. Sure, that's a really confusing way to describe it, but yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> it's um, I I don't see somebody wearing that and having a noob being like, "Whoa, where'd you get that cape?" You know what I mean? Like that's what I always like the Inferno cape. Thing looks pretty badass. You know, if you're rocking that in the GE or the free to play world, when mobile hits, you're gonna have noobs being like, "Wow, that cape looks fucking dope." Whereas they see this cape and it's it whatever. It, they're just it's just gonna look like a normal cape for the most part. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think uh, more importantly, what the hell would this match with besides like corrupted armor? The 100 tier corrupt, like it doesn't match with anything. Yeah, that's my problem too. Like you thought, like you would think this would tie in with one of the pieces from the raid, but not really. Because it's not even like a super, it's like a, your normal purple, right? It's kind of a brightish purple. It's not super dark or anything that would tie in well with the, 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 the scythe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll look good with your rune armor, the the ancient, ancient trimmed yeah. version. True, purple trim. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure. I don't like the look. I think it's it seemed pretty last minute. Yeah, it doesn't seem like as much love went into that one to make it. It's gonna be something that you get and you leave in your bank just to like remind yourself, like, oh, look at what I got. Like, it might be good to people who do a lot of raiding, but it's not gonna look badass to people who have never touched the raid, right? Yeah, that's what you want. You want a cape that you can walk around, like literally. You want to be able to walk around free to play and have people like gawk at you, being like, "Whoa, where did you get? The- can I get one of those?" And you're like, "No, buddy, listen to me. When you're a seasoned veteran like myself, you can get something like this." Yeah. You know, oh, what, 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 uh, what clue scrolls does that come from? Look at the, uh, the team X or the team I or the team zero capes from the team master 10. clue scrolls or one of the, yeah, team, one of the, uh, I forget what clue scroll it comes from, but those look badass. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's unfortunate that this is kind of, yeah, I underwhelming, like, but I guess, I feel yeah. like they might change it. I think it's a placeholder. It better be. It would be nice. Yeah. Both, I hope they change both of them one day. By both, I mean challenge mode as well. There's still one more, not item, but thing you can get from the raids. It wasn't said in the dev blog, but has since been released. And there is a pet that is released, or there is a pet that you have a chance of getting. It And the name is Lil Zuck. And Lil Zick. supposed to look like the Lil Zick. Or Lil... Lil Vic? What's it? Lil Vic? Is that what it is? I don't know. Let me, let me look this up. Lil... Definitely not Lil Zuck, because that's a... Uh, Lil Zick, yeah, Lil Zick. Okay, Lil Zick. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's this the the new pet, and it just basically looks like the last boss, which is like an overweight lady with a spider legs and a spider web spinner behind. I don't know, I even know what that part's called. Um, if you examine her, it's it's her SoundCloud. 
Nice. Thanks. <laughs> That's I'm I'm just kidding, by the way. But yeah, new pet. I like it. It's the last boss. I thought it would be like a bat or a just a spider or something like that, but they kind of went a little above and beyond. I guess it's like a character, right? It's just uh it's a yeah. little cartoony. Yep. A little silly. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, moving on though. Um login screen competition. Congrats to A Scrub. That's his username. And nice. he is the artist of what you're looking at probably when when you get on tonight or today or or tomorrow. Or yesterday when yep. you got on. Or yesterday, yep. Or maybe maybe you're listening to this and it's been like five months and you didn't play around this time. And you're like, what what are they talking about? In which case you're gonna have to Google something or come back to this dev blog. Yeah. He gets a year long membership and an exclusive old school goodie bag. I wanna know what's in the fucking goodie bag. Yeah, I'm curious too. I know there's been some streamers that get this care package and I and it's just a bunch of like I think it's just a bunch of random things I can't even remember or I don't even really know what's you know in dope? the box, but it'd be dope if they but, gave like um like F key caps. Like, you know, for your mechanical keyboard, like new new buttons mm-hmm. for your F keys. And it would be like, you know, your inventory, your like attack style. Ooh. You know what I mean? So you the just pictures. replace. Yeah. It'd be the like pictures the pictures. Of the tab. That's I think a good idea. They've probably done it. And I'm probably just. But like, I, if they haven't and you're listening, Jagex, that would be sick. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'd buy that. I'd buy that shit. Or having all your keys kind of replaced with that yellow text that you have in game. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe not so much, but yeah, still that's that's a good idea. Yeah, having a mouse with one button on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Auto clicker mouse. Um. Anyways, uh. And in, uh, in other news, they have made some improvements to. Um. Fuck. What's that place? I, why can't I think of the name right now? I'm brain farting. Meyer ditch. Yes, the Meyer ditch. Uh, if you haven't done a taste of hope or anything like that, it's kind of a pain for a lot of things in that area. If you're going to the Meyer Ditch, they've done some quality of life buffs for it. So if you're sitting there saying, "Wow, this was wasted content," because I'm not gonna be able to do it, well, <laughs> they, when you're doing your two quests in that area, they made it much better. You can now force the Vire Watch to show interest in you and teleport to the mines. Yep. The agility interactions are now left click rather than right click. Thank God. You know how much of a pain it is to have to right click through that shit? I don't know why. Now, unless they've gone back and updated and changed this, when I was doing A Taste of Hope, which was a night the night before Raids was being released because I'm lazy and a procrastinator, to get the, the, like, the second obstacle course, you have to climb down this like plank. You still have to right click it which is like if you've ever if you've ever gone back there to do a master clue which i have countless times i'm always forgetting how the hell you get on the ground floor and then i realize oh yeah this agility spot it shows up as walk here until you right click it yeah ass. well yeah with this update that came out with uh theater of blood they they made it all oh, left clickable right right this would have happened the night after i did the quest makes sense yep there is okay. there is no longer confirmation when depositing ore in the mine cart when you, you know, show interest and get to the mines faster. You can now left click the mine cart to deposit instead of having to use the ore. You should like click the sickle button in the base when entering the hideout. Interactions are now left clicks. They made guards dialogue more obvious that his story is a quest start. Like they cool. really improved the area, made it less of a pain in the ass. Mm hmm. Um, a lot of random things. They corrected a music track, Clan Wars, and random things. Okay, yeah, that's it's pretty much it's pretty much it. I do like how it says the music track, Clan Wars, had been corrected to use the correct instruments on the track. So I, I've never listened to it before, but I'm only like imagining it's meant to have like a piano track and has some like French horn or like a voice going. And this is where we're gonna put the piano track. <laughs> yeah, I just never actually did it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess we have to talk about the overall update now with all the bosses. Yeah, it was a pretty big event and the entirety of it was actually very enjoyable on my end. Like 
I had a great time trying some of it out. I had a great time watching it. I had a great time just sitting. I don't even sit on Twitter too often, but I kept my Twitter open to see when they would post updates. So yeah, um, the night before the Raiders were released, I mentioned that I had the whole week off. So I like Wednesday night, I'm kind of prepping. I get my items that I think is going to be used within the raids, all the things I'm going to use. And as I'm getting there, it's like probably midnight, Wednesday evening, Wednesday night. And I'm at the theater of blood gearing up and I'm seeing a bunch of other people around my level kind of showing up. And they're like, what items are you bringing? Can we do gear checks together? So they were like, we're kind of going doing gear swaps showing what we're going to be bringing he was showing what we were going he was going to be bringing then he was like you should bring the fury instead of the torture amulet because that might be better to start things off and i'm like yeah that's a good point what do you think about void and we're just kind of going back and forth and then there's a couple people there and then we're like all right guys well i'm going to bed have a good night good luck tomorrow and it just seemed i don't know it was kind of cool the way it was going on it's like you know you're all prepping together even though tomorrow i'm not going to see the person but yep. you're like all gearing up a few hours before this is going to happen. And then, yeah, we kind of logged out and I set my alarm at like 6 a.m. the next day to to go try this. I want to beat the I want to see the system update come up and be able to jump in as soon the minute it came out. I kind of slept until 6.30 a.m. So I got no sleep that night before. This is going to sound sad, but I was legitimately excited and could not sleep when I was lying down. I was in bed and I would just get this like slight rush of adrenaline at like 1 a.m. in the morning being like, holy fuck, the raids, the new raids coming out tomorrow, which mm-hmm. is like it. I don't know. It brought me back to when I was a kid and Christmas was the next day. And you're really excited. You know what I mean? Like I've lost that feeling for Christmas. Or like electives at school. You're like tomorrow I'm going to school to snowboard. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. And you get this ping of like anxiety and adrenaline and excitement. And I was having that like at the like i'd be like close to falling to sleep you're like you're like you're getting really tired and you're like nice i can go to sleep so i can wake up for raids too oh it's gonna be sick oh no i'm right i'm wide awake wide awake now god damn it yeah and i was i just i couldn't sleep i don't even know what time i went to bed but i just know like i'd start dozing off and the second i started dozing off i started like thinking about i'm gonna i'm gonna daydream about or not daydream i'm gonna i'm gonna dream and think about and fantasize what the new raid's gonna be like i'm gonna picture myself being the f- world first completion you tell anyone who doesn't game they're gonna be like dude that's fucking sad but you're like you know what motherfucker i had a great well i had a great time trying to sleep and not being able to sleep and just staying mm-hmm. awake for hours getting three hours of sleep i was night. excited and you were dreading work yeah who's a loser now eh? <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like when i'm sitting there excited for, to play a game you're like oh god damn it jen is such a bitch it's her yeah. birthday she makes like, everyone has to celebrate her birthday she's gonna get she's yeah. gonna be like wasted by like one in the afternoon she's gonna come, come back from lunch and be wasted she's gonna flirt with me and then i'm gonna tell her i'm married was, and she's gonna get mad it was my birthday last week and nobody even said happy birthday to me sure i didn't tell anybody it was my birthday but we're all at it on facebook they should just they should just know mm-hmm. anyways i was excited i woke up at 6 30 went downstairs had coffee and breakfast, jumped in, and boom, the whole theater was packed with people. Similar experience. I, like, headed down with the people, you know, some of the boys. We got ready for raids. We're like, all right, let's log out here. And it's funny because I'm, like, telling everyone, like, fucking, I'm going to bed now. You guys better go to bed at the same time. I swear to God, if you guys are, like, too tired, like, fucking, like, it was, like, probably, like, 11 or something. I'm like, I'm getting up at 5 o'clock. You don't have to get up that early, but, like fucking sleep i want to like this is gonna be sick guys come on we like you know mm-hmm. compared gear and figured out what to bring blah 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 blah. i went to bed i passed out easy as fuck because i was so tired woke up at like five crawled to the kitchen got a coffee and, like i sat there and slowly just stared at my computer and then i saw the system update ping for five minutes left and i'm like oh man got on we all got together i jumped into the discord we got our gear found out none of them fucking went to bed and i was pissed any of them were listening i was pissed i was ecstatic i was having trouble finding a group i was kind of going with randoms which people who are way under geared and way under level but i just wanted to experience it i'm like you know what i got no sleep last night i stayed up late i woke up early i'm doing this fucking raid and then i was kind of like trying to find random groups and then you've kind of met you messaged me being like 
hey are you in a group one of our guys just left and i was like oh i can do it with i can do it with the people who carried me in chambers of xerix so let's 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 do this and he they kind of like went to bed one by one none of them went to bed that night i was so fucking i mean i was (laughs) cheese because i like my i was like oh it's gonna be perfect we're just gonna play we're gonna do raids to all day and i kind of knew like i had a i had a feeling that we weren't gonna be able to clear on day one spoilers we got to the third room out of five six six Oh, you know what room? Okay, yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah. There's six. I don't know. I I completely forgot about this. About um, I guess we'll talk about it now about the rooms. So, yeah, I, fuck. We'll just want to just talk about the bosses and how they are. Yeah, let's just let's just get right into it. Yep. So the first boss is a is the maiden of Sugadinti. Is that how you say it? Sugadinti. The maiden of Sugadinti. Yeah. Yeah. So she's the first boss. She's like this um pitch white chick with like red hair and she's like being like held up in a pool of blood. Like it's like, like so I don't know, it's like a she's like standing in a pool of blood kind of, but it's like pushing her up. It's kind of hard to explain. She looks really cool though. Yeah, really cool bo- looking boss. So the way the fight kind of works out, assuming five of you are going in there, she does these these, these like magic or ranged attacks, but it looks like this whirlwind kind of thing that she shoots at somebody. It does a fair bit of damage, but she shoots whoever's closest to her. And then you basically, the meta turn into, you just kind of blow Piper down, right? Or Tebow, if you have, if you have or one. Or Tebow, yeah, yeah. We all had, we had the blow pipes or whatever, but you bring her down to like 70% health, and then she spawns these, these be- well, they're, they're ticks. They look like these beetle tick looking things. I believe it was eight of them spawn with a group of five. Sounds about right. Yeah. And they all, they kind of spawn in a line and they kind of walk towards her. And if they're able to get to her, they will blow up and die. And she gets, she gains health. And I believe it's how much health that that tick had. Yeah. We'll call let's call them beetles or they're all calling them spiders or crabs. We'll call them crabs, I guess, to make it easier. I don't even, whatever. The bugs kind of give her health depending on how much health they have. So what it turns out you have to do is barrage them so they can't move, and then you try to take them out before they get there. So this happens three three times incrementally throughout the fight when she gets certain percentages, but they only happen that one time at that percent. So let's say it happens at 70%. She heals to 100. She's not going to do it again at 70. She'll do it at her next stage, which I believe is 50. But while that's also going on, she spawns these like blood pool things, and they just kind of move around and they leave these spots of blood on the ground if you step in them you will take damage you lose prayer and she'll heal for how much you're getting damaged for so what you want to do is freeze them and kill them as fast as possible because if you don't keep them under control too many of these little blood spawns will happen and the next thing you know you're just getting closed in by all these little puddles that you can't step in right yep i I think that's i don't think i'm missing anything there but you kind of just do that and try to um yeah out, she, right? she has an attack that that will shoot like pools of blood at you you just have to move if you stand still it fucking it it kills you it drops like 30s on you and it drains your stats and prayer and every it fucks you up yeah Heals you have her to be watching for her to shoot that so you can move you could sidestep it a bit and she does three so if you're in the middle of running she'll leave three splots of where you just were pretty cool boss i think i mean it's pretty easy it's a really good introductory boss for the raid. Like it fits the theme super well. She looks really nice. Um, the like the mechanics are like pretty easy, but like also unique. Like we talked about like what some of the mechanics I expected to see in the raids were things like she spawns ads and you have to ice barrage them and shit or chin them down. Yeah, you know, and that's not really a mechanic that you've seen in other bosses, at least in old school. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. A little mix of like kill the ads, don't stand and stuff, and control the space, and you'll win. It seems almost like the f- the the first three rooms seem to have these like certain themes to kind of get your party prepared to for the last three rooms. Like I like to think of it as she kind of has a mix of you want to be able to kill her down fast, as well as minor mechanics you need to be ready to dodge and stuff like that but nothing too heavy just to kind of as you said an introductory to the raid but it's kind of like to make sure that your a your dps and b your in-game mechanic skills 
are kind of good, you know, on par with, you know what I mean? Yep. Nothing too hefty, but yeah, pretty good. So you beat her. You can move on to the second room. And the second room is the Pestilent Bloat. So it's this like bloated monster looking thing, right? He's just big and looks undead. If it's your first time coming to this room and you hadn't watched any guides or streams, your party's going to die. That's just what everyone happened. Every streamer who got to this room without seeing what happens, they got killed because it's it's not like a typical boss fight. So there's this giant pillar in the middle of the room. He'll be standing on one side of it and he's kind of just walking in a one direction for the most part around this pillar. So you jump in while he's moving, if you if he can see you, basically, if you're in his line of sight, he will shoot the swarm of bugs or flies at you, and it will bounce towards all your party members. Anyways, he'll continue to, when he he's walking around, every now and then he'll stop moving, and he kind of just falls asleep. At least that's what it looks like. He has these yellow orb things on his back that start flashing to kind of indicate when he's going to wake back up. The idea of this fight is... You basically want to stay on the opposite side of the pillar that he's walking. And when he falls asleep, you want to be then that's your chance to run and deal damage to him before he wakes up. If one party member gets caught, like let's say they lag behind, he'll shoot the swarm of bugs at them and your whole party will feel the damage of that. And it does a lot of damage. There's a bunch of times you'll be watching a streamer or you'll be doing it yourself and one guy is lagging or he gets caught off. He gets hit by the swarms and he he should suicide to him. He, but if he tries to run to the party, your whole party is going to either get killed or it's going to take a lot of damage. So while you're trying to stay on the opposite side of the pillow that he's at, there are these hands that fall from the ceiling. And there's a shadow that appears that allows you to kind of not click on it. But if you get caught underneath that hand, you'll, get, takes, you'll take a fair bit of damage, but you'll also be stunned for a second, which makes it really easy to get caught off, caught off with your team and getting caught by the pestilent bloat he will speed up after enough damage is taken and he also changes the direction he's moving just randomly so you're always having to watch to see where he's moving see at any point if you're rushing he could turn around and one of your guys could get caught and that's i think that's basically the basis of the fight am i missing anything no that's pretty much it it's more of like uh don't be stupid and, and you know you won't you won't get caught and the theme of this boss, it seems like it's to see how coordinated your team is together. Because, like, you kind of want to be on voice chat for this one. You want someone who's, you want, as soon as you notice he turned around, you want to yell out, hey, he turned around. If somebody gets caught, you don't want them running, panicking and running back to your team because then yeah. your whole team's going to take damage. The one thing with this boss is that my mistake or your mistake becomes everyone else's mistake. Like, if one person in the raid fucks up, on this boss like you can just wipe your whole team and they and it's like they did it correctly but like you got caught and you're like oh i gotta run away but it's like no just go fucking suicide because you're now we're all dead like that that's the one thing i noticed like if i if i got caught it's like well i'm just gonna just stop i'm i got caught it's my fault you know what i mean i mean maybe there's a chance i could run away but i don't want to use all my teammates supplies trying to yeah it can if you're not praying correctly I, i think you pray range it hits you for like 30s. If you pray range, it hits you with like a lot less, obviously. But it's still and hurts the pestilent a lot. bloat. Yep. Oh, okay, interesting. But yeah, it seems like this whole thing is about this one's theme is like mechanics. Technically, if you're soloing, this boss can take you can spend an hour trying to kill this boss, and you're not going to run out of resources if you're dodging everything correctly. As long as you're able to stay on the opposite side of the pillar as him, dodge the hands. And, yeah, just not get caught. Eventually, you'll kill him because you just take him out every time he falls asleep. Yeah. Anyways, after this fight, after you take him out, your party is rewarded with their own chest of resources. So this is where you start getting the Sarah Brews and some Manta Rays or some Stamina Potions. So as long as you're actually doing things in the fight, you will be able to get your resources back for the most part and kind of give it, give it to your team as required. Then the third room, which is where we were able to get to but couldn't get past, it's... You enter this room, and there's basically three... You're you're in this circular room, and there's three different paths. 
not including the one that you came from. And then in the room, you have four different pillars, and the pillars have their own HP. So what's going to happen is these three different paths, these crabs, or the actual ticks, are going to start coming from. And they're pretty easy to kill, but they're kind of color-coordinated on the type of combat you're going to need to use. So blue for magic, white for melee, and green for ranged. But the, these crabs or ticks aren't going to be kind of... They're not. Their aim is not to kill you specifically, but they're going to be attacking these pillars. So what you're trying to do is prevent these ticks from doing damage to the pillars. Because once one of these pillars comes down, you're going to take a fair bit of damage. And once all four of the pillars are down, your team basically wipes. You're dead. Um, the room is pretty much tower defense. That's pretty much it. It's just a tower defense minigame within the room. There are the bigger ticks that once you kill them, they die, but little ticks spawn where they were. Blah, 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 blah. It's all about, like, coordinating and whatnot, being able to, like, make sure you don't leak. Yeah. But, yeah, afterwards, you kill... Once you defend for long enough, there will be, like, a one giant tick that comes into the middle of the room. He will change between white, green, or blue, depending on which attack style you have. Like, if he's white, you know, you're going to melee him. Blah, 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 blah. And it, so you just have to change your attack styles, and I believe you pray melee, but change your attack styles, and you attack them. If you hit them with the wrong attack style, you'll heal them. So you have to be mm-hmm. really quick on changing or, you know, changing your attack style. It seems to be, you know, if your team can coordinate well enough, it seems to be a pretty easy fight. Yeah, yeah, the theme of this one seems to be, again, team communication but also a dps check because you need to be able to kill these beetles fast enough so that you don't get overwhelmed and fast enough so that they don't deal shit ton of damage to it because it it is very easy to get overwhelmed if you're not able to control your pathway you know what i mean a lot of teams were designating a person to each path so if you're not able to control your side of it it's yeah super easy to get flooded with these crab ticks and just get completely overwhelmed and just have your pillars collapse. Yep. I think largely this is the least favored room because it's with all the other fights, if you are good enough at them or you have the gear, you can rip through it quickly. This fight as of now seems to be like set on like a six minute timer. Like it seems to be like no matter what you're spending six minutes in this room. And it's, yeah, and if you're like a a really good team and you have this shit done easy, it's pretty boring considering the the uniqueness, I guess, of all the other bosses that you, that you'll fight within the raid. Mm-hmm. It's very stale and very long. Yeah, because you ha- you have to wait for these ticks to spawn. You know what I mean. So the faster you kill them, doesn't speed you up. It just keeps you from not dying. You still have to wait for the each wave of them to come at you. Pretty much it for that room. The the next one is Soda Sag, I believe. Yeah, okay, yep. Soda Sag. So this is a a dark beast looking monster. And this is when the fire really starts hitting you. You know what I mean? Like it, this is when it seems like the separates the boys from the men. You enter this room and you see this dark beast looking monster at the far end of it. But before you can get to him, the room is filled with these tiles, basically. And they don't do anything at first, but there's a large amount of them. This is where I might start mixing up some of the mechanics because this is when shit kind of starts hitting the fan real hard. And I wasn't even actually able to experience this firsthand. But he he seems to shoot these two different orbs. And from what I've seen, you have to change your prayer depending on what color the orb is and if it's coming at you. If you don't, if you aren't able to do this, it disables your prayer for a handful of seconds. He also has another move where he shoots a giant orb at one single player. And what you have to do is your whole party has to basically pile on top of that player because the damage will spread to every single person in that area. So if only one person gets hit by it, you get hit, you basically get KO'd with a 99. You get one hit with it. So what you want to do is spread that damage out. And I believe it's like 15 if you can get your whole party piled on top of each other. Another mechanic, when he hits a certain health percentage, he will choose one player randomly and teleport them to, quote, the Shadow Realm, 
which is basically an area that looks exactly the same as this room, but things a little bit darker. What happens is you'll be on the opposite side of where the boss is. You'll see the tiles in the middle of the room kind of start lighting up and they'll start making a path. And the person who gets selected to go to the Shadow Realm has to follow that path that is, of the tiles lighting up. The, the other four players that aren't in the Shadow Realm they'll see the tiles light up to where that player is running, like the path the player is running. So then your party has to follow the player, basically follow them through the tiles they're going up, they're going through. If the player in the Shadow Realm takes the wrong path or steps off of the tiles that are lit up, the party that, because you're going to, since you're following your player that's in the Shadow Realm, you're also going to go on the wrong tiles and those four players will take a shit ton of damage. And usually when that happens, your team would, your whole team would wipe. Yeah, if you, like, step on the wrong squares, your team, like, one person steps on, like, the wrong tile, everyone takes a lot of damage, and you have to go pretty quickly through it. So, after a couple seconds, when the person from the Shadow Realm starts, like, running this path, there'll be, like, a tornado that follows the other four players. It's like, I don't know what it is, but this, this thing starts to chase them as they're running past the path, so everyone has to be pretty quick on it as to not take damage and die. Pretty pretty interesting to watch go down. Yeah, it's pretty cool because if that player in the Shadow Realm messes up, then everyone else feels the repercussions for it. You know what I mean? You basically wipe the team by misclicking. But I think that's it for that fight there. The next one is Zarpus, which is a, a bat-looking boss. Gargoyle bat type thing? Yeah. So when you first enter this room, you have, you're on top of the Theater of Blood at this point. You're on the rooftops. And Zarpus will be in the middle of the room. These yellow splotches will spawn in that area. And what you need to do is your party members need to stand on top of it because these yellow orbs will be funneling over to Zarpus. He's not going to be doing anything at this point, but those yellow orbs will start giving him health. So if you're able to step on those splotches, you'll prevent him from gaining health health right this prevents you if, if you mess this up he's gonna have like more health than he needs to be and this is a fight where you want to have him to have as li little health as possible obviously so again i might miss some of the mechanics for this one but from what i know from watching some of the live streams and stuff like that he'll randomly shoot these yellow globs at a player that do damage in a three by three square but the spot that it hits it will leave that yellow goop in remaining in that spot if you step in it you will take a lot of damage kind of want to move and he'll just continue to do this if you don't have proper position it's really easy to really make the battle area a lot smaller by kind of having the the goops in really bad spots for your team so once you take him down to a certain percentage of health he will stop shooting those yellow goops Instead, he will start facing different corners of the battle area of the room. If he is staring at you and you attack him, you will take a large amount of damage. So the idea is to have your party kind of spread out to each corner while you're attacking him. And when he faces that corner, you just stop attacking. Because if you take this damage, you're going to exhaust a lot of your resources and you're probably going to die. This one seems fairly easy when I was watching some of the streamers go through it and some of the other teams. Once they had this fight down, they were able to fight through the whole thing without using any resources. But that's basically the basis of the fight. He kind of moves around in a rotation looking at each corner. You just stop attacking when he looks at you or you move to the next corner and you start attacking him from there. And I believe you do that until he dies. And he is the last boss before you face the final boss, which is Lady Verzik. So this boss obviously, but it seemed to give the teams trying to complete the raid for the first time the most amount of trouble. This is what kind of kind of prevented the raid from being complete as soon as it as people might have thought it would have been. It's a three-phase fight. The first phase, she will be sitting on a throne and there will be six pillars in this room. There is a staff that will be sitting on the ground and what needs to happen is somebody needs to pick that up and then I believe you talk to her to start the fight. At which point you have to run and hide behind one of these pillars. Because what she's going to start doing is she's going to shoot these magic attacks. 
in your direction, but if you're behind the pillar, the pillar will start taking damage. So, so the staff has a special attack, and what you need to do is in between her attacks, you need to run out and use the special attack to shoot at her, to take down her shield. The special attack takes 35% energy, so you're able to get like two shots out before you have to drop it and give it to your next party member. After a handful of hits, the pillar will come down, and if you're in the area of where the pillar is, you will take a lot of damage. So once it's about to go down, you, you need to move to the next pillar. And you kind of have to keep doing it. There's two pillars at the end where you're unable to actually hit her with the staff. Those two pillars at the very end are meant to regain your special energy so that you can go back and do the rotations again. Anyway, so you basically keep doing that through all the pillars until her shield's down and then you have to fight her. Obviously, once all the pillars are down, if you haven't taken down her shield, you're going to start taking a lot of damage and probably wipe. After that, she goes on to her second phase where she will fly off of her throne. Well, I shouldn't say fly. She's a big old lady, and she's kind of hung from this this bondage-looking device. I think that's how you described it a couple episodes ago. Sex swing. Yeah, your little sex swing. So she's hanging from that. She'll come over to the middle of the room, and she'll do these body slam attacks. If you're in melee range, you'll get sent back a bit and get stunned for a short duration. She also sends out these weird, like, little ball things at you. You have to move out of the way. Right, yeah. She'll shoot on your tile that you have to click mm-hmm. off of. So, in between, you basically have to do a hit and move each time. Yep. She'll also spawn ticks. Purple, blue, red, and white ticks, I believe, um, at different points. Um, purple, like, heals, and then, like, I don't know. There's, like, a lot of, like, there's a lot of shit that goes on in the fight. And there's some ads you have to deal with. Yeah, and you have to like move around quite a bit because the ticks will explode and do damage if you're in the area yeah there was a lot of teams trying out like running every tick and like hitting them with whips and then there's also people mm-hmm. doing it with twisted bows there was like a lot of cool different strategies this is like really what like got a lot of people was this phase two yep um, oh yeah it, it looks so goddamn difficult once you get it down to a certain health, I think it was like 30%, she spawns these two ticks that will heal her. No, sorry. She spawns these two ticks. If you damage her while these are spawned, you will heal her. So what you have to do is you have to kill them. But they spawn like every 20 seconds or something like that. So you need to kill them fast enough so that you can deal damage before the next one's spawn. And what a lot of teams were having trouble with was getting the DPS out to actually kill them and then do damage. I know there was a bunch of times you were watching it and all they were able to do is kill the spawn before the next spawn showed up. So they weren't able to do do any damage at all. So yeah, as you mentioned, this was like the phase that gave teams the most trouble. Like this is where people really got stuck on. Yeah, but for a while, all the teams that were trying to race for the for the first kill got stuck on here. So I'm just going to play a quick clip from the Maru team after them taking out this phase. <laughs> Again. Dead, dead, dead. We did it! Oh, no, 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 it's not over! What is this? Keep going, keep going, keep going! What do we do? Keep going, just keep going! Oh my god! Keep moving, keep moving! Pray mage? Tebow's chugging yo, shush, 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 please! Shut up, shut up, I just want to play that clip real quick because a lot of people thought that once this phase was over, the fight was done. But once the team finally got this kill, they realized it was a third fucking phase, which nobody was prepared for, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone was. I mean, a- except for the J mods. Yeah. So yeah, she goes into her third phase where she turns into like a half spider, basically what the pet is based off of. So in the first phase, she doesn't really move around too much. She stays in the middle of the room. Third phase, she now starts moving. She will target players and shoot projectiles. We need to pray magic or ranged. Ticks are also spawning that will explode and do damage if you're in the area. She will also shoot these webs out that if you get caught, like a lot of webs in your direction, and if you click on it and get caught, you'll get stuck. And the only way you can get out is if somebody deals damage to the webbing and releases you. And these yellow splotches will appear on the ground that you need each of your players need to step on. And if you are not stepping on it or you're stepping on a yellow spot that 
another teammate is on, you will both take a large amount of damage, and I believe she heals from it too. So you need to watch out for this. While this is happening, there are also these like vortexes of fire that are moving around the room, so you have to stay away from those as well. I should have mentioned, but in the second phase, and I believe the third phase, she will have this blue ball that kind of shoots at a player and will bounce from you to other players, but you're able to send it back to the boss which i believe deals a bit of damage and the more players it bounces to the more damage it'll deal to the boss so it's kind of like a i don't know a volleyball sort of thing you got to pass back to her and i'm sure i'm missing some mechanics for this fight because there's a lot of shit that goes down but i believe that's basically basically the last boss in a nutshell so what are your what are your thoughts on the raid what are your thoughts on the boss um raid overall yeah. Um, so overall, I was actually like really blown away with this this new raid. My like we've talked about it in the past, but we really hoped that there was a lot of really cool, interesting and new mechanics. We also hoped that prey flicking would not be a mechanic. I I, I want to specify like one tick prey flicking. I don't mind switching my prayers. I don't want to have to like click every point six seconds. I don't want to double click for that shit. Yeah, you don't want to have to face three jads where you're constantly having to watch when they're shooting their attack at you. I mean, I don't mind that. I, I personally don't mind having to change my prayers a lot. I think that can be fun. I don't like having to like click really quick so my prayer points don't drain. That's what I'm saying. True. Okay, yeah. But they had like a lot of really cool mechanics that I hope to see. A lot of ones I didn't even think of. But aesthetically, I thought it was super cool. I liked the bosses, the pacing of it. At least it seemed when teams started to finally get it on farm, because we should mention it took over 24 hours for the first raid to be completed. Yeah, also important to note, the J mods on the Q&A, I believe it was on the Wednesday, so the day before, they were asked, when do you think the raids will be complete? And it ranged from two and a half hours to five and a half hours. So they were all wrong by like 20 hours. Yeah. Uh, I think they overestimate. Typically, I think what happens is one team goes and tries something out. Well, like, like let's say there's eight teams on the second boss. So the first boss is super easy. Like, we one-shot it, no problem. And then it's like, all the teams get the second boss. They all sit there and stare at each other. Who's going in first? This guy goes in and dies instantly. This team goes in and dies instantly. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not all of them jumping and trying to figure it out. It's like, they're like kind of waiting for someone to die but figure out the fight so they can jump in and try and do it correctly and get ahead yeah a lot of like leapfrog and type 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 of a thing but there was also just a lot of new mechanics that threw everyone off too yeah there's a bunch of things where people were constantly trying to figure out what does this do do yeah. we step in this yellow splotch and a lot of things were if i made a mistake i would kill my team like a lot of that it was happening yeah. so it's like it kind of quickly became a thing, and I think it will be consistent through this raid, is that, like, you're going to be held down by your weakest player, and if they make a mistake for, like, a good number of the rooms, like, you're going to fuck over everyone, not in terms of just the fight, but, like, you can kill, like, you can just hard wipe your whole team. Yeah, and what's cool, it's like, you're not held down by maybe a little bit, but not as much by their like gear and damage but you'll be held down a lot more if they're not mechanically skilled enough um but overall yeah i think it's super amazingly well done i thought like all the fights minus a third room third room seems kind of boring but all the fights seem like super awesome like i really liked them all they all looked really cool Mm-hmm. i was kind of getting burnt out grinding for the twisted bow the tebow rebuild because it's like it's a long it's a long stretch i guess long ways to go yeah for sure Mm -hmm. and i know it's the same with a lot of other people too is that you're kind of like man you guys probably know like the past six months all i've done is xerix and it's like fuck it's so boring like it's so boring doing one thing for six months and there's not really much else i could do i mean i could go do bandos but why am i you know i'll do what one trip for fun if I'm going to do Bandos for money, I'm sh- I'm going to go do Xerix for money because it's better money. With this new raid, it's now like a new goal, right? Like Inferno, you know, it's not really a goal. Like Realistically, nah. You want to have top tier gear like in everything. Yeah, else. but like to get from point A to point B, 
which is a twisted bone, like max gear and shit, is so long that you kind of get bored halfway through. But like now, it's kind of reignited my will to grind. Yeah, definitely. And that's why I've been, yeah, I've been playing quite a bit, trying to get that Tebow for like for the new raids because that just it sounds so fun to do. Xerix is it, mm-hmm. it's good and all, but it's really tedious having to scout. Having to skill. Oh, make sure to bring this yeah. item this time. Make sure to bring this item this time. Oh, bank this item now, because now you're now you have to bring in these items because these guys are like it's so it's good. Xerix is really good, but if you do it nonstop for so long, anything in general, I guess it would get to you. Yeah, exactly. But now you can kind of switch things up. Yeah, and, and like they seem to take out a lot of the tedious things that was in the old raids. And they've also made it a point where they've done, they've already done some tweaking to the first three rooms and they want to make, I feel like what they've done is they, they have like a set time that they want like an average team that's good and has it on farm, like an efficient team. They want to have like a set mm-hmm. time that like, it's going to take this long. And the first yeah. three rooms people kind of complained about. So they're kind of making it a little bit more either enjoyable or like more consistent. And I think it's, it's going to be like a really good update. I think I think this is going to be like a catalyst for uh other good updates. Really good example to look at. Yeah, I agree. It's a it's a turning of age, I guess, when it comes to PVM. And it's good to note that they don't want they don't like the name Raids 2 because it makes it seem like grind out Raids 1 until you have like decent gear and then and then move then you graduate to raids two. They want both the raids to be on par with each other. So basically at one at some point in the future, in the far future probably, the gold will be the same from both raids. You know what I mean? It's not like a step in progression. That's why which makes sense when we kind of complained before that a lot of this gear is going to be tier seventy five and we were like, why not tier seventy eight? A lot of this new best in slot. But now I kind of understand because they don't want this to give you a better tier because that is a progression in like what PVM content you should be moving on to. This is now it, they want it to be considered on par with Ray, uh, of uh, Chambers of Zarek. Yeah, and it's yeah as you said they are doing some tweaking to make things more enjoyable, less punishing. For instance, in that second room, if you get hit by a hand that stuns you, before they would fall like a bunch of them fall randomly, and you had like little to no time to dodge it if you were on the square it was on yeah they've slowed it down or they've actually made it so the shadow is shown before like a little bit earlier so that you have time to actually move off if you're not paying attention day one it was like and i'm about to get hit like there's no like oh gotta move it's like it's above me i can't move in time unless i'm already walking away Mm Hmm. Yeah, they also his speed would would fluctuate randomly, and they fixed that. But they're like they seem, seem to be really dedicated on just making it an enjoyable experience, and something you kind of flip flop between depending on. Oh, you know, we got like two guys. Let's go do some uh, raids, some Xerix. Oh, we got five. Let's go do some Theater of Blood. Cool. Keep in mind, you can jump in and do it solo. You're able to do Theater of Blood solo. It is a thing. Like it's a possibility at least. Yeah, because the mo- the mobs or the ads like those in the first room, the ticks that heal her. If you have less people, less will spawn. Her health and damage is still the same, but there's just less ads you got to freeze and kill. Because with eight of them as a solo player, that'll be impossible. But you have like what three, like two or three of them to deal with as a solo player. Yeah, so it's a little bit easier. But yeah, this whole update was, and it was like an event for me. I had a lot of fun. I, yeah, wake, waking up early, trying it out. I started watching some of the live streamers try to get the world first, and I thought it was going to be done in the first day. I ended up sitting in my office chair and watching it for the whole day for like 16 hours, taking just little breaks here and there to get food, maybe stretch my legs, go outside and get some sunshine, breathe fresh air for five minutes. I, I was surprised by how much fun I was just watching these teams race. I had like three different streams going that I was skipping through to see who was getting where one team get to the last boss and then they'd get very close to killing it at one point well as i played that clip earlier the first team was able to take it to the third phase and then another team would would go in and they'd get the third phase down to like 16 percent, and that would go on for the first day until everyone got tired then everyone went to bed and you're like oh shit i might wake up tomorrow and someone might have completed it but sure enough, you wake up the next day, no one's completed it yet. You watch them all get geared up to try and do it again. 
It was really cool to watch. Another team was able to get down to 0.7% before wiping. That's fucking like so close. Could you like could you imagine getting that close? And then another team coming up afterwards and was able to take it out after that. Yeah, it was really fun, like jumping between all the streams and like seeing everyone kind of try and get like the worlds first. I, I don't know. I thought it was super interesting. A lot of like edgier seat moments. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's great. It was, I had a lot of fun spectating it. Yeah, it made my Zalra grind pretty nice because I was just doing Zalra and like watching the stream at the same time. See, I got nothing done. I was doing Vorkath and I found myself, when they get to the last boss, I found myself just standing there AFKing when, while I watched them. Yeah, most people did. Like, I would I would do the same thing. I'd like finish a kill, go POH, go to the, like the boat, and then I would like stop there and I'd look and there's like six, seven people in my world like, you guys watching this shit? You guys, who's, which stream you guys watching? And we'd like all chat about what yeah. we're watching. It was actually really, really cool. Like, there'd be moments where like most of the communities had a standstill just like watching who's going to get world first. It was like... Yeah, really cool experience. In the first day, there was something like 7 billion GP that left the game due to people dying and retrieving their items from the box. Yeah, I know I lost at least 2 mil. Yeah, I lost a crazy amount of money too. And the second day, the first hardcore Iron Man was killed. I have a feeling that was one person who just sacrificed his account because he wanted to be that number one. Yeah, he did that. He made a guy rushed... uh priest in peril or whatever and then just like ran to theater of blood and suicided it yeah it wasn't like an actual person it was just a troll yeah yeah i had a feeling so it is important to note that the first team to complete it was the team of some of the popular streamers and more seasoned pvmers i suppose and these guys were wooks which has done a bunch of crazy pvm stuff bodhi who is a popular streamer Cloud Badass, who was just a big in the PVM scene. Same with Zulu and Hard, but I, I believe he has an Iron Man named Lake. Lake? Yep. So those are probably some familiar names to anyone who keeps up with that stuff. So they were able to be the first ones to complete it, but it was fun to watch because there was two other teams who were all getting super close to killing it. And some of them got even farther than the than Wooks's team. Like, they got farther than they did before them. You know what I mean? It looked like they were going to get the world first. And yeah. And sl- a slight problem, and they, they lost it, which would be there was like, very disheartening. There was really cool instances where, like, when Wooks' team first gets to the to the third phase, and he uses Monster Examine, and he's, like, scrolling through, like, okay. And he's like, oh, he's weak to Slash. He's weak to Slash. She's weak to Slash. And they're all like, oh, fuck. Like, they've been using Tebow's. And then they start like, okay, let's bring Dragon Claws. And when she's chasing this person, someone going and declaw specker. Like it was like really cool watching like those moments where like the big Eureka moments. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So as of today, which is Sunday, it's been four days since it's been released. There's been 48 completions. 141,000 people have died. Upwards of 14 billion gold has left the game. Right now, the fastest total completion is 31 minutes and 28 seconds. But yeah, there, there's the, there's the big update of the week. I know this kind of went on pretty long, but they've mentioned it's going to be a while before we get another another end-game PVM content like this. Yeah, this should tie people over for a long time, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, some good end-game content, some really cool items, some good money alongside with those items. Yeah, a little more, little more flavor. Maybe maybe they'll add, like, challenge mode. Who knows? Yeah, give it a year. Let Verzik change it. Lil, Z- Lil Zick or whatever. Mm-hmm. Change to whatever. Whatever pet you want in the raid. Now, I guess we'll move on. Even though some of the stuff we just talked about is kind of community stuff, we'll continue with that theme, though. And again, this is still kind of ties in with Theater of Blood. This is has everything to do with Theater of Blood. There was a party who was doing the Theater of Blood... And they were all banned for three days because the main party leader was actually one of the players who went to the the test, the, the last play test of the raid. He had signed an NDA to not like talk about the raid, not to stream it, mm-hmm. any of that stuff. But the problem is he was running the raid with four people who, who had not done the play test. Good. They deserved it. They knew what they were getting into. So they all got banned. The J mods had mentioned that they noticed one team was making very fast progression compared to the other ones. They went and checked it out, and of course, they see that one of the people leading it was one of the people at the playtest. So yeah, they all three of them got banned, which is 
kind of light in terms of like having a contract where you're not going to disclose any of this information. Yeah, no, seriously, be lucky that JX is um, lenient with this shit. I, but I, that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if he's never invited to a play test again. If he is invited again, I'd be, I'd be really surprised. Yeah. Because like that is serious. Like in terms of, he could have easily just been like, yo, pay me 500 mil and I'll tell you everything about the raids. Yeah. I'm not saying he did it, but he, he, he could. Anyone could. Maybe people did. Oh. Conspiracy music. I'm kidding. No, no, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. (laughs) In other venues of this type of stuff, people get sued for disc. You know what I mean? That's what the NDA is to prevent. You know what I mean? It's to say we could. People get like, there's been not like in Jags, but in like similar instances where like a game developing company will like disclose information to groups of players to like help better the game. And then they break their NDA. And then they just get permaban from the game. They just, that's it. They're done. Ban on site. Like, there's, like, that's happened before. And he's lucky that didn't happen. Yep. Because, like, if he got, I think the main thing is if he went on, if he was, if this happened and he didn't get punished and they got, like, they would have got the first unique for sure. Halfway through day one, they get it. They have, like, 12 hours of farming. Not for sure, Mm -hmm. but they're most likely going to get the first unique. And that's, like, like, okay. The first Avernic that dropped went for two bill. The, yep. the I don't know how much the first Sanguine SI staff. The first vials were going for like what eight mil each or four mil per vial of blood. Like there's a lot of money that was going in. The, like Spark Mac had a buy offer for the first Grazi for five for five bill, and whatever team got it fucked up and put it in for max cash and it got insta bought. Wow, I believe the first staff went for three point five bill. Okay, yeah. And that is, I mean, GP rates aren't a, like a dollar per mil ratio anymore because of the Venezuelans, but sure, it is still a lot of money being traded over that you can just easily real world trade, and that's actual money. Like, th- like there's actual monetary gain for leaking information in raids too that you've play tested, and I think JX understood that and just trusted them. And one of them, you know, hopefully they don't bring invite him again. If they do. I'm going to be a little skeptical on on some things. Then we'll cue the conspiracy music. Yeah. So, yeah, that type of stuff. It's uh, And if they didn't do anything, it would set precedent that, like, anyone else could... There's no punishment for doing that sort of stuff. So, a three-day ban, pretty damn lenient. So, moving on from Theater of Blood, uh, you mentioned last week about this Solak bug that people were abusing in order to get the completionist cape. Yep. So, we talked a bit about that. But there was an update on the RuneScape 3 subreddit about more details on it so we'll just quickly go through it just because it might be a little fun facts to talk about there were 252 accounts that had defeated Solok during the period that this bug was live so they kind of went through it and really did some investigations into the count it turned out 154 players were abusing the the bug whereas 98 players were not yeah rip uh tony's nephew oh yeah well some streamer stuff there i guess yeah yeah, one of the main people that we're getting shit on for abusing this bug. Ouch. So for, out of, for, so for the 154 players who were abusing it, they had any of the kills on Solok removed, which means they lost some achievements. Any of the Solok collection log progress was removed. I'm not sure what that means. Any pets gained from Solok were removed, and all of them had were punished with temporary bans, which ranged from three days to two weeks. And that's basically what I have here. Do you got anything for us? Yeah. We actually forgot to mention one thing. Oh, with Theater boy. Bloods, my bad. I kind of just remembered. the word. We didn't talk about the bugs that happened, did we? Oh, yeah. There were some slight bugs that need to be fixed. That's right. Yeah. The main thing we should talk about, which got hot fixed pretty quickly, was and all the players were reimbursed back with their items. Oh, that is right. This is a big... During yeah. Wooks's team was fighting the last boss, Lady Verzik, in the first phase. Dills talked about the whole Dawnbreaker thing. You want to use a special attack. Yeah, the staff. Yeah. So when you die with the Dawnbreaker, you would drop it. But there was a bug where you would keep the Dawnbreaker and drop an item. Now, I'm not really too sure why, how the item was selected, but I believe it was 
Zulu or Cloud Badass, one of them. I, I, I can't remember actually who it was. But one of them died. It was Zulu. It was Zulu. Okay, it was Zulu that died, and one of them said, who dropped their Warhammer? And they're all like, no, none of us did. And so the person thankfully went and picked it up, was like, okay, what the fuck? They wiped, and then they go back, and yeah, I guess it was Zulu was like, I fucking dropped my Warhammer. And you watch the clip, his mouse is nowhere near where his Warhammer was, and it just like literally... There was no click. There was no no shift clicking. Like, because you know how like the item will like kind of gray out or go a little bit transparent before you enter. You know, you equip yep. it or drop it. None of that happened. Just like poof, gone out of his inventory as he dies. Thankfully, his teammate picks it up, gives it back to him. All is good. There was another instance where an Iron Man loses his armadillo chest plate. Mm, yeah. And he shows a screenshot like I lost my armadillo chest plate, but I have a I smuggled the Dawnbreaker out. J Mod's contacted the team. Thankfully, the guy that picked it up gave it to the J Mod, and then the J Mod I guess destroyed it, and then gave the item back to the Iron Man. So he's not he's an, uh, he's not an official Iron Man anymore. They had to de-iron him for this. I'm totally kidding. That'd be that'd be fucked. Oh, I was gonna say I missed that part. Holy no, fuck! That would be so fucked. Seems like he's getting punished. If you're listening and you're like, well, at least he smuggled out that cool weapon. As soon as he tried to equip it, it crumbled to dust. So it's not even like he could show it off. Yep. So there's some pretty big bugs. Another bug to mention that this got hot fixed real quick was Wooks was able to safe spot the boss with a twisted bow. He wasn't able to do damage because... He was the only one left? Yeah, and also he, she was healing because those ticks were alive. In, in the stream, he got up and he went and made some food while he was AFKing and fighting her. So wh- while he had left, the chain mods instantly hot fixed it, and he would just he just started taking damage, which was actually kind of cool because I was surprised to see them be able to hot fix it in like yeah, it was like it was like two minutes, it was like two minutes of the the bug. They did state that it was kind of intentional, and they wanted players to like maybe possibly back out and kill the ticks, or they said something like that, and then they realized okay wait a minute no this is bad and they went and like hot fixed it like if he could actually okay this is a little squirrely let's just let's let's get that out of there um that was pretty much it for the bugs though well there's one more that we had that i did see so when some of the big name streamers were doing it you had a bunch of people spectating if you don't know right now but you might notice this when you go to the ge on a full world Mm. that you don't always see all the players in that area and as you move around, some players disappear while others appear because there's just so many that only a certain amount can show on your screen. Yeah. But what was happening was when the streamers were fighting, if somebody got near where the spectators were, since there were so many watching, some of the teammates would disappear. And when you were trying to land on those yellow splotches for the last fight, that would prevent you from taking damage on that orb that hits you. But you also couldn't be on the same splotch as another player. If you can't see your own teammates, a lot of the times they were stepping on one that another teammate was on. Yeah. So they had fixed that so that you're only able to either move the spec. They did something. I can't remember. They fixed it. It's nice. I think the big biggest thing is that Jagex actually returned items back, um, especially to an Iron Man too, right? They can't just like, well, here's enough bonds for the value of that item. Yeah. Like It's like, you know, here's actually the item. Last thing, I guess we haven't really talked much about YouTubers. I don't think so. Here and there, maybe. Yeah, I, I feel like we should talk about it because it's, like, it's kind of been blowing up a bit on Reddit recently. So there is a popular, or I guess he was the most popular YouTuber named a friend, and he's had like a couple of like controversial things happen, I guess. One was like accepting yeah. over one bill worth of donations, and uh, he said he would use it for content, and then the next video is him giving it to a scammer, like giving 150 mil to a scammer, whatever. Uh, recently, he like was promoting, I guess, a Bitcoin... Like a, a like a cryptocurrency gambling site, yeah, which prompted like everyone to to freak out. And I, I think more of it was like if you guys ever followed him, like back in the past, he was really like, he was well known for doing like ten hours of like blank, right? You know, the whole like ten hours of rev caves, like that whole type of concept came from him. A little bit of everything, like ten hours of bandos, ten hours of theater of blood. Yeah, that whole concept he kind of pioneered. So he's kind of like an important figure, I guess, within um, the community. And he had a, a hardcore Iron Man series, and he ends up dying. And it, of course, at least in my opinion, his his, his content started to like go 
become like less they became lower and lower quality and i think people are kind of getting upset and then he kind of like completely sells out takes donations he doesn't want to play the game and make the money that's fine he'll go buy the new items and then theater of blood comes out no no video on it and then a couple days later he releases this like cryptocurrency gambling promotion yeah and people are kind of upset because it's like well why didn't you try and buy some of these items and show us yeah no kidding Cue, cue the conspiracy music. Oh, yeah, I'm, shit. I'm kind of putting twice in one episode. Yeah, 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 we're doing a double decker. What makes a friend so well known, I guess, is his unique Lithuanian accent. Okay. Recently, he has gotten a girlfriend, whatever, but the community blames her for like the lack of quality content in his. In his videos. Okay. And the Maiden of Sugadinti, who is a boss in Theater of Blood. Theater of Blood was supposed to be a big video for him. He's going to have really cool videos on the uniques, right? Mm-hmm. So the first boss of Theater of Blood, Maiden of Sugadinti, you know what Sugadinti means in Lithuanian? It means to ruin. No. Yeah. So I think Maiden of Sugadinti is actually his girlfriend. Ooh. And she's she's ruining him. I think that's it. Jagex. You sly motherfuckers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, I honestly kind of just wanted to make a joke on that. I, I didn't know Sugadinti meant to ruin, and, and I was like, oh, this works. That's that's kind of cool, though. Um, I mean, the fact that, like, do you speak Lithuanian or something? Is there something I don't know about this? No. I thought you were going to say it's amazing the fact someone can play RuneScape for 18 hours a day and then have a girlfriend. <laughs> that, that's amazing. Jesus. What kind of shit is she putting up with? she cleaning out his, his, his piss jugs? <laughs> we don't normally talk about kind of like YouTube and streamer drama because one, it's I, I don't, I'm not always paying attention to that type of stuff, but also it's we get enough drama that goes on in RuneScape to deal with like second, third party things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I just want to talk about Sugadinti. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's that's pretty fair. obvious. I built up to that. Um, so who cares? Uh, just go watch Torvesti. He's, he's more interesting. Yeah. Whatever. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Exactly. And if you find a girlfriend and it makes you lose interest in the game, totally fine. That happens to tons of people. Who gives a shit? I would actually say that's probably normal. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's probably what <laughs> happens to... Yeah. It's, it's Yeah, that's there's fair. another human being that you guys mutually have an interest in, and now the thing you spend 18 hours a day on doesn't seem so enticing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's... that's Pretty fair. weird stuff. Um, I think that's it for community stuff. But since we're mentioning it, we should say... Don't use those staking sites out there. They are 99% of the time rigged and won the YouTuber's favor so that it makes it look like they're able to win easy money. And two, they're rigged against you by like, you know what I mean? By like a, sm- a slight amount where you're going to be losing weight. Like it, you, the chances are you're going to be losing. You saw that with the CSGO bullshit. Yeah, look up CSGO Lotto Scandal. It is literally this, but it's for cryptocurrency. Whatever. Yeah. Not a big deal. Um, good, good memes are always good memes. Anyways, um, I think that's it for community updates, right? I believe so. And if it's not, well, we're going to sever it right here. We'll save it for next week. I think next one might be a bit of a shorter one. Yeah. Update wise. Anyways, let's move it on to some good old lore. Three hours in. Continuing with the history of the kingdom of Great Karend on the continent of Zaya. Last week, we talked about the rise of yet a new king, as well as the assassination of another. And we ended last segment on the civil war that had broken out on the 121st decade and ended on the 123rd decade, an event that not much information is known. This week, we will be talking about a new kingdom, the Kingdom of Varlamor, also known as the Shining Kingdom, located southwest of Great Karend in the Cabos region. The Kingdom of Varlamor was found by refugees fleeing from Great Karend during the Age of Strife, yet another event we do not have information on. But we do know there was a war involving the Great Karend. The Kingdom of Varlamor 
was ruled by the Emperor Imafor. On his 30th birthday, he invited the royal family of Great Karend to attend a feast in his name. They arrived in the city of Civitas Illa Fortes, which is the capital of the Kingdom of Varlamor. At this feast, Emperor Imafor poisoned the royal family, which then led to the Great Karend waging war on Varlamor. The emperor was promptly killed in one of the battles during the war. With the emperor now dead, the war slowly stopped. During the reign of King Kurds III, who ruled from the 132nd decade to the 134th, he had many hopes of repairing the relationship between Karend and Varlamor. The king of Karend ordered an envoy to be sent to Varlamor to transport the Royal Accord of Twill to be displayed in the Grand Museum of Civitas Illa Fortes. However, during this trip, the Accord was lost at sea and remained so until it was discovered by Artur Hosidius in the 141st decade. To this day, the betrayal of the Emperor Imafor remains fresh in the minds of Karen's people, and their trust has yet to be regained. Although, near the Karen castle, there are soldiers sent from Varlamor, presumably sent to ease tension between the kingdoms. Next week, we will start wrapping up the history of the Great Karend. All righty. Well, I hope you guys prepared for a long one because with this big update, I'm, I mean, you should have pre- predicted a little bit. Anyways, we're going to wrap her up right here. So if you guys want to get in contact with us in any sort of way to let us know whatever your opinions on Theater of Blood, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Have a little discussion next episode. Sure. Yeah, we'll talk more about that for sure. Yeah. Anyways, let us know in on Twitter, which is you can contact us at, at the Wilderness RS. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash the wilderness podcast. Our email is the wilderness podcast at gmail.com. If you want to come hang out with us in game and partake in some PVMing or just hang out and shoot the shit, our clan chat is wild CC. And we also have a Discord, which you can join in, hang out, post some pictures of your RuneScape progressions as well as engage in discussions our discord is posted on facebook and twitter or you can ask one of us if you're having trouble finding that and we will get you a link so you can come join deegan uh it's your turn to say your stuff twitch and twitter deegan rs nice nice and quick all right guys thank you so much for thanks for hanging in there on this one hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys next week yeah have a good one oh before we get out of here this isn't something we've done before but I have some people requesting the certain songs. So I think we're going to start mentioning the names of our tracks that we play at the end. All right. So our song of the week this week is the final battle song for Lady Verzik called The Fat Lady Sings. And it's one of uh, people seem to hate it or love it. I'm a big fan of it, though. All right, guys. Thank you very much. See you next week.